we hit live because it takes a while for the little faces to show up. But I know that if you were watching me right now at this moment, you are one of my replay viewers. So welcome to the Late Night Crafty Club, and I'm so glad that you are here. We have our live attendees that are going to start showing up to the club. And then uh, you uh, are here already <laughs> watching me, maybe a few hours later, maybe a couple days later, maybe a month or even a year later. Um, we upload, we have been uploading our live replays onto our YouTube channel and we are, um, hello, hello, hello. Now I see your little faces. Hello, hello, hello. Hi everybody. Are we simultaneously doing the uh, yep. YouTube and Facebook at the same time yep. again? You ready okay. for the song? Yes. Okay. Mr. Cracky's playing our theme song. We haven't heard this in a while, right, ladies? Yay! So see your playmate. Come out and play with me. And bring your dollies three. Climb up my apple tree. I wish I could sing like that. <laughs> right? Me too. Well, <laughs> never mind. Just Mr. disregard that. You heard that. Mr. Crappy says he wish he could sing like this too. Say, say you'll play me. Come out and play with me. This is how we welcome our friends here in the Late Night Crafty Club with our own little theme song. Watching me on YouTube and Facebook tonight. We are so happy to. You are listening to the vocal stylings of Amber McLean, one of the most talented singers on YouTube. I believe she tours around performing too, and I think if I'm not correct, if I'm not correct, she actually toured in Europe. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. We reached out to her to get her people to get permission to play her version of this song, which is magical. We just think it's such a fitting song to encapsulate the feeling of our special club right here on the internet. It's so sassy. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone joining me live. And my uh, replay viewers, I am so happy you are here. And um, you might want to double check our YouTube uh, connection just to make sure I'm seeing in the Yes, see the chat. YouTube? Yes, but someone saying that the YouTube viewer is not showing. Oh. Anyway, um, so I know that when you watch as a replay viewer, I am interacting with like I'm looking off to the side a whole lot. So I just want to explain that I have a little um, tablet here so I can see the chat room and I see the chat room for both YouTube and Facebook at the same time. You guys are all combined together for me so that I can see what you guys are up to. Um, we are using a simple <laughs> camera setup versus the fancy one that we started using for the last few uh, late night crafty clubs. Because it's a whole lot. Mr. Crafty spends several hours putting it up and tearing it down. And um, he is very focused on our launch because we are two days away from the Reset Girl Shop launching the brand new collection called Treasured. And it has some really fun uh, little extras in it. Um, one of them is called Honey Mail, which is so adorable. It's a little kit of um, little like cards and little with, that come with little envelopes that you can write letters to your crafty friends, you know, here in the club. And so now I have my soft, breezy jazz music, which is so funny because I don't know about you guys, but when I was younger, I would you couldn't pay me money to listen to music like this. <laughs> and now I'm like, ah. It just, first of all, it completely elevates the RV. It makes it me just feel super classy right now. Like I'm sipping a Chardonnay instead of ice water. Um, so we are um, all set up here in, we are in, uh, we're outside of Nashville. So when people say Nashville, it's a pretty broad area. 
I am technically in the little area called Goodlettsville. Uh, and I, this is our second year staying in this particular RV park. And one of the fun features of this particular park, which is not scenic or beautiful in any way, um, it actually has a uh, train track <laughs> that butts up against the property so you can hear trains going back and forth. And it's a pretty busy train track. Um, so they're coming through like hour upon the hour in a lot of cases, which I, I guess you get used to. Um, I'm, I, it doesn't bother me, um, but you might hear it during the show. So just FYI. And um, you will also notice that I do not appear to be wearing pajamas, but au contraire, my friends, I actually am wearing my little <laughs> jammy pants that have little wiener dogs wearing little dog sweaters. And I also have my little slippies on that I'm obsessed with. I love these slippies so much. It's very cold here. It's like uh, probably in the 30s. So the RV gets very cold underneath and the floor is like icy. So I am forced to wear slippers, which I'm not generally a slipper person, but I, I like having, uh, I don't like having my feet frozen. So <laughs> I've been wearing those and I am wearing um, a super fun little shirt that I got from Mod Cloth um, with my jammies. It's a little book stack. How adorable. Doesn't this look like something the Reset Girl would have made? I absolutely love this shirt. And this is my new Big Bird sweater because <laughs> I feel like Big Bird in it um, and it feels like a little robe. So I've been, it's like my little evening cozy sweater. Um, so I have my candles. Um, look, I'll even show you. Hopefully I will not start a fire this evening, but I have my little candles. The candle is a Yankee candle and it's called Quiet Sky. It smells divine. It is so lovely. So I have it safely tucked over here. <laughs> Hopefully it will not set off any alarms. Actually, I should probably not. I'm going to move some stuff over. So I rearranged my desk. I, um, I've been kind of working on other projects lately. I have not been being crafty. So I had to get all my craft stuff out and kind of arrange it. It didn't take long because I have it all tucked in my little cabinet. It's very easy to pull out and everything. So I am excited to get crafting tonight. I have my Crafty Club playbook, which um, I encouraged all of you guys to grab it and come on because that is one of the biggest reasons why I made it is for us to be able to sit here and just craft in our books together and I do feel a little bad that I didn't craft as much in it this month as this month as I should have but I'm going to get to the reason why in a moment I have a super legit reason and I promised um for those of you who are in the Facebook group I had mentioned that I was going to give you guys an update about winter camp and um, I had intended to post what I'm about to say um, and I didn't get around to it because I ended up having a surprise um, appointment today. So um, I'm going to, everything I'm about to say, I'm going to like briefly summarize and I'm going to um, put it on our website and then link it in the YouTube video of this video, this live replay, and I will also link it in the Facebook group. So if you should see people who ask the question, um, you could be a sweetie and be like, hey, Corey, address that here, here's the link. It's going to go on our website. Because um, I wanna make sure that I get out um, all the information <laughs> uh, properly and um, I have a tendency of kind of like meandering about, I, I admit this about myself that I sometimes I beat around the bush and this way you can just kind of get the, the plan, if you will, for 2019. Uh, sorry, wait, no, it is 2019. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what year am I in? <laughs> So, um, so for those of you who are joining us live, uh, this is the part where you guys get your craft supplies out, get your craft book out, get whatever you brought to the club, get your something to sip and just go ahead and start diving in and you don't have to wait on me because I'm going to actually do a little bit of chit chat before we, we do that. And you can just, you know, listen, not listen. Um, if you are watching our replay, then please feel free to join in as well. I do have a post in the, um, the Reset Girls Crafty Club on Facebook that invites everyone to share your projects that you make during the live event. I always 
like and encourage you guys to share, you know, take a picture of what you've made during this time together and post it. And that way it's kind of fun. I think, I mean, it's, it's for me, um, for all of us to kind of see what, what we're, what was everybody up to? We were from like all over the world. Um, there we have club members that are international. So it's a very classy club. It's an international club. So, um, I am, I have to manually, uh, force the <laughs> comments to go. It'll get stuck. And I want to make sure that I am, uh, uh, live and up to date. So, um, yes, there is no fire hazards going on. Uh, we all remember the tragic, <laughs> the tragic incident at, uh, camp reset this past summer. Um, there may have been a fire. There may have been a fire which oddly enough did not set off the fire alarm. Um, that was the work of a completely different incident. So um, I have missed your faces so much, you guys. I feel like um, I have been very much, <laughs> very much incommunicado, incommunicado. I have uh, felt much like a hermit um, and I can see there's a lot of crafting going on in the club. In fact, I, I jumped in the club the other day and I was kind of scrolling through and I feel like this is the first time in so long that I feel like all of the posts I was seeing were so project oriented. There were so many girls getting crafty and sharing what they'd been making, um, it, which just makes my heart sing because uh, that's something we definitely encourage. And the whole point of the Reset Girls Craft uh, Crafty Club is for you guys to have this wonderful, encouraging place to, um, to get crafty, to hopefully overcome any type of perfectionism that you might be uh, dealing with and to get um, crafty and be, you know, encouraged by your fellow club members, be able to ask them questions um, and get inspiration from each other. So that has been super awesome to be able to see that going on uh, probably more than ever. I'm just like blown away. And do I not have like the best creative team? I often am just like, like, I feel like I get my breath you know, kind of captured so many times when I'll open Facebook and I'll see one of the posts from, um, the design team. And I'm just like, I would never have thought of that. It's just, I love that. And that's why I was so, um, so very much wanted to have a design team because I am just not, uh, I don't pump out a lot of, you know, crafty creative projects a lot, especially when I'm working on other things. For you guys so it kind of it's always bummed me out that I notice like my own production slows down in that area and so now it's wonderful that I have this awesome group of ladies that just make such beautiful things and they're just it's so inspiring I don't think I've ever been as inspired um, in the reset girl history as I have been now so I've just um, missed your little faces. I've missed doing these lives. In fact, this was sort of an impromptu late night crafty club. I didn't really, um, I've, I've been so focused on winter camp that I, uh, really, I, I wasn't even planning on doing any, doing it, <laughs> but I'm about to share with you what the last few weeks have held for me. And we'll hopefully all have a good laugh. And then you'll see that like, I was just like, I really miss my friends and I just want to have like a fun craft session. So, um, it's, it's, you know, this is a completely selfish <laughs> act on my part is I miss my friends. Um, but I miss your faces and I, and I definitely, I, my intention honestly is to be able to have at least one chapel and one late night crafty club every month minimum. That's like a personal goal of mine. So we are like, it's January 25th. So we are like really close to the wire here. And, um, yes, Kristen says the creative team is killing it. Kristen, I, that is absolutely how I feel too. So, um, Kelly says that she's been hiding from the snow all week and working from home, watching videos every day. This is a perfect way to end the week. So for some of you lucky ducks who are living it up in the snow, <laughs> Um, I'm glad this must feel super cozy being in on a Friday night and, you know, out of the cold weather and just getting to just, you know, it's like the, like easy jazzy music on. And, um, I think that if you are able to kind of create that sort of ambiance in your little craft space, like how 
perfect is that? That's something we should all be, um, you know, trying to achieve each. Well, I'd like to think all of us could, you know, that all of us should shoot for like craft time every week, but I know that's really hard. I mean, I, I don't even know if I would make it every week, but, um, I certainly try and girls, that's the reason why this exists is to encourage all of us to do that and to have something to show for 2019. When we get to the end of 2019, we're going to have this big, thick, luscious playbook. It's going to be super fluffy with all of our projects that we've been working on. And you know what? Don't let it discourage you if you didn't really blow out January. It's totally fine because you're going to find pockets of time, you know, as, as different months. Some months have more downtime than others. Some seasons, you know, come with more downtime and the better you are at saying no to things and making sure you're saying yes to self care time, which this is self care time. So the better you become at saying no and, and making sure you're making room in your life for stuff like this, the, the fluffier your book will be, the, the more stress reducing uh, experiences you'll have, the more you'll feel like you can breathe, the more simple your life will feel. Um, and, and we're all going through different things, that's for sure. But this is the whole reason that we have this. And the whole reason I do this show is that so you can have that, that connection and be like, ah, I'm in the club. Nothing else matters right now. <laughs> I'm going to get my crafty on. I'm going to listen to her chitter chat. <laughs> And I'm going to have something to show for it. Look at it this way. This show could be the one thing that makes you like get your book out and start filling it up. Like even before I turned the camera on, I started kind of filling out some pages. Um, I want to get caught up. The, the thing I was most excited to work on was during, um, was my documented page and my listing page. Like I really want to capture and document more stuff that we do because I'm so bad at that. Um, in fact, the other day, the day before yesterday, I posted um, in the Crafty Club a picture of us on our way out the door headed to some secret location. Mr. Crafty wasn't telling me where. And I took those pictures and I did that so that I could actually like put them, like take a copy of them and put them in my little memory keeping book. Because... A, I don't get out much, and I really sincerely mean that, but I don't get out much, and we don't really go a lot of places, and that's by our own choice. Like, that's the introvert life, people, <laughs> right? None of you guys, um, none of you guys are judging me right now because I, that's just how introverts are, and I think Mark and I tend to, like, lean way on the spectrum of, like, really, <laughs> really being introverted. Like, can't pry us out of the RV <laughs> if you want to, introverted. Um, so, uh, it has been, um, it's been super fun to like, even be able to share that. Like, look, we went somewhere <laughs> and it was awesome. He took me to Shen Yun, which I don't know if all of you guys have heard of that. It is this, uh, I would Google it cause I'm going to do a terrible job explaining it, but Shen Yun is a, uh, it's a, it is a dance company. There's actually six of them that simultaneously travel around the globe all year long. And they put on this beautiful show. It's um, traditional, like ancient Chinese dancing. Um, and it is, I've never seen anything like it before. And I think I came across an ad for it on Facebook is how I even knew, knew of it. And I've tried so many times to go to one of the shows, get my mom to go to a show. I've tried so many different maneuverings and I could never pull it off. We've driven down the road and seen like billboards for it in cities where it's like, oh, we just missed it. Or, oh, we won't be here when it gets here. So... Apparently, Mr. Crafty saw it advertised and he jumped on it. So that was my Christmas present. So uh, it was very, it was very fun to go to this little fun Wednesday afternoon matinee at the Performing Arts Center. I felt quite fancy and uh, got to dress up <laughs> wearing something other than my pajama pants for a change. Yay! So um, I did feel, I always feel really artsy when I do some stuff like that. When we were dating, um, I asked him to take me to the symphony a few times and we saw some really awesome shows uh through the seattle um symphony so it has been 
it's been a lot of, I don't know, it brought back a lot of memories of our dating, like when we were first dating just, I don't know, five years ago. And so um, it was fun to do that. So those are the kind of moments that I want to get better at. I just bought myself, I can't show it to you because Mr. Crafty put the monitor in front of it, but I just bought uh, yet another little uh, desktop printer, a little photo printer. Miss Tracy Claiborne, my friend, uh, she does a podcast with me. She showed me hers and she said it is by far and away the best photo printer she's ever used. So that caught my attention. And so then I like, she did a test print for me and I was like, holy smokes, the quality of this, this picture is amazing. So I went ahead and bit, I took, I, I bit the bullet and I bought one, even though I have the Canon selfie. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed. Um, so I will probably sell the Canon selfie. Uh, cause I actually have never, I never even used it. I think it's still brand new, like in the box, but this it's an Epson something. <laughs> it's an Epson something. Um, but it's bomb. So I'm going to get to be in doing some memory keeping this year. That is going to happen. And hello, hello, everyone who's been joining me. I'm just kind of chatting away, talking about what's been going on lately. And, um, I, Let's see. I'm trying to get a read on how many people are in the club at the moment. Um, so I wanted to kind of share with you. Uh, I wanted to get to the, the big story of the evening, which is the update on what's going on with uh, the winter camp. So I've learned some things about myself that um, things about myself that I really I really do need to work on. And one of them is I need to be careful about uh, opening my big mouth. <laughs> And, and getting everybody excited and and, tr and believe me when I say this, every time I tell you guys like, we're going to do this, this is going to happen. It is with the absolute best of intentions. Like it is like, I believe it. You know, I'm not just like, I'm guessing this is going to happen. I believe this is going to be. And one thing I was very, very excited about was bringing a different type of camp experience to you. And when Camp Reset ended, and I've mentioned this many times. So you guys have heard me say this. Um, Camp Reset was really an eye opener to me. And, um, and it was very, very, very like, hugely successful. Um, and it was, and it was awesome. And I think what I walked away from was really what an amazing community that we, we have here and that this shared experience really brought a lot of us closer that we really bonded, that we, we really, like so many people showed up for the different live events that we had throughout camp. And I felt like there was really heartfelt participation. I know not everybody was able to keep up with everything because there was just, there was a lot, you know, there's just a lot going on in your life. And let's face it, Camp Reset is kind of like this little getaway experience. And it's not something that, you know, you can't, you can't plan. You're going to have unexpected issues come up in your life. So I get that some people struggled keeping up and some people were there for every single thing. And it was just an absolute blessing to get to offer it, to, to, to watch you guys enjoy it so much. And it really made me realize like how much I loved doing it and, and I want to do it again. And so when I thought about winter camp, I was like, great. Like last year I tried to do this goal setting, um, kind of ex thing experience workshop and I just couldn't I couldn't execute it in time so I thought well this will be it uh, this will be the thing that I, I do this time well, I'll, I'll do a, wi a winter camp that's goal themed and I and I honestly will be be very honest with you I am a huge goals oriented person I have been I mean I'm very very passionate about personal development about being the best version of you you can be I have been that way since I was a teenager. I used to have like positive quotes. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know, like I would write them out and put them up there. I would go buy books from like books, like the real bookstore and copy them out and tape them up on my wall. I was very self motivating and not everybody is not everybody, uh, finds goal achieving and all of that to be easy. Some people very much struggle with it, but I have, knocked goals out of the park. I have simultaneously achieved goals, big goals, little goals. And so for me, it's like, Oh, I get to talk about something I'm so passionate about. And what I didn't realize then is that 
You can be very passionate about something and love it so much, but it's very different to have to explain it, to actually have to kind of break it down and explain it to somebody else. And so I really believed that I was going to be able to do that. And the, the thing was, though, is I had housed all of this amazing goal setting within the parameters of doing it in a camp environment. And I think the magic of Camp Reset was all the fun. It was the imagination. It was pretending we were at summer camp and girls again. And there's like magic there. You know, that's that was fun. It was escapism. Working on your goals is about your crummy reality <laughs> that you're in and trying to like build a new vision for yourself and then work it out. And it's like being in kind of like be in like the ditch and digging yourself out. It's, it's kind of like, okay, I got to get real with myself. This is really where I am. And now I have to, you know, b get myself out, build a new life. It is a different mentality than having fun at summer camp. It's work. And I, and I shared that I said, Hey, I'm going to make a workbook, not a playbook or a handbook because this is going to be work. But what happened was every time I would sit down to work on it, I would, I would get overwhelmed by all of the amazing stuff, resources and books and all the quotes and all the stuff that I had gathered together. And I just couldn't fit this topic into a camp sized hole. <laughs> it just, it wouldn't work. And it, it, as time was passing, you know, and like that deadline was coming because I told all of you guys I'm going to do January 1. And so as that, as, as December started melting away and I was, you know, I was starting to get to the point where I couldn't sleep at night. I would lay there tossing and turning and be so worried. I was started having nightmares. I, I started like having like little mini breakdowns at my desk because I now I, I admit I am something of a perfectionist. That's something I do struggle with. But when I ask you guys to invest your money with me, I want to bring it. I want to dazzle you. I want you to feel changed from an experience with the Reset Girl. That's my brand is super. It's a reflection of my heart. Everything we do, I'm not just another little sticker company or another little, you know, planner inserts. I, I, those are nice things that we offer, but when you come into my little world, I want very much for you to feel like, wow, I've never experienced a group like this, or I've never gotten to see all these different resources before. I want you to feel changed by being in my little sphere, my little opportunity to be an influencer in your life. I want you to feel it. And so that is a lot of pressure <laughs> that I impose on myself. And so I just could not make that winter camp topic of goal setting and, and really monumentally helping you make some changes. I couldn't reconcile that with, but it has to be fun and it has to have fun themes and it has to have this playfulness. Like it, they just couldn't work together for me. And then I realized, look, I, I, I've run out of time and I can't even test any of the things that I want to put together. I can't even test them out because there's no time. I did not leave myself enough time to really test some of the things that I believe is a good way of explaining something to you that I believe is a good way for you to grasp what I'm trying to share because there's a kajillion ways of looking at goals and a ton of people who talk about them. I need to set myself apart by how I look at things and how I, you know, talk about goals and how I would explain it to you in a way I think my people could understand it a little better. Maybe some people in my group would be like, oh, that's really cool. I never thought of it that way. Some of you guys are goal getters and you don't need me to help you with that. Some of you guys do it for a living. So uh, believe me, I'm aware that I have a lot of very successful people in my community that don't need me to <laughs> tell you nothing. I get that. But I just wanted to try and make goal setting a fun thing. And it, it can be, I just want to make that clear. It can be a fun thing. But what I discovered in every attempt, every run at it, I just, I personally couldn't reconcile that for me. As much as I wanted it to work, as much as I tried, I even had my very sweet friend Angela sit on the phone, like a Skype, 
for hours, multiple times, trying to help me like walk it through, talk it out, like let's figure it out because she's very much like I am that way. And I just came to the point where I, every day I'd wake up feeling like a failure. I'm letting them down. I'm going to let them down. They're not going to like this and it's not going to work. I just, I finally had to come to the point where I had to accept defeat. Like as much as I want to do this, I can't execute this experience the way I want to in the time that I have. And at first <laughs> this made me spiral into depression. Like for a couple days I was like, I, I, I felt horrible because I'm the one that was like, Hey everybody, we're going to have camp. So I did that. And for that, I truly apologize. I sincerely apologize that I, I apparently had too much faith in my, you know, in my ability to do this. And I have learned a very valuable lesson in what my, really when I set to work on something, really how I do things. So that has been an eye opener. But it doesn't make me feel better about having let, you know, letting anybody down at all because you guys are very precious to me. And I take the fact that you spend time with me, that you support our business, I take that very seriously. I'm very grateful. So it's personal to me when I have to face you guys and, um, and explain, <laughs> explain all of this to you. On the other hand, being the reset girl, one of the things I am very proud of and is as painful as it is, is I'm proud to say that whenever I can be transparent and share my share mistakes I've made or failures I have or struggles that I'm going through, despite what may look like outer success, there are struggles going on. I, I want to be completely transparent that way because that is the best way that I could possibly inspire anybody is to kind of pull off the, hey, there's no perfect social media film here. This is still a woman struggling, you know, with all of her little idiosyncrasies and her little being in her head too much. I'm, I'm still just at the end of the day, a person who deals with that. And I'm not this big glorious company with a, you know, departments, <laughs> like a marketing team and a department of art direct, you know, people that can come in and kind of like fix everything and work together. It's, it's just me. So for, so for that, um, it's important to me to be able to tell you like, here's what happened. So at least you have some understanding. I'm, I'm not going to ever hide that from you. If I fail a mission, I want to be up front and tell you, this is what happened. Um, I, I am a planner girl, but I <laughs> oftentimes don't plan for very important elements like time to test things out. Or, you know, because I need to be a thousand percent, a hundred, like confident when that product rolls out that my name's on it and I stand behind it. And that's what I couldn't do. I, in good conscience, realized I don't have enough time to put my name on this. So there is a huge, um, uh, silver lining in all of this. So, um, I did have a couple down days and then as I was talking I, I reconciled, okay, I'm going to have to tell everyone that we just aren't doing this and I don't, I just don't know what I'm really going to do with myself now. And, and I'd already started thinking about summer camp coming and, you know, and I love summer camp. I love camp reset, but I was starting to think, you know, I got this feedback from everybody. You guys were very generous with your feedback. You gave me a lot of really great things to think about. And one thing that was obvious by far and away, the favorite topic of Camp Reset was our creativity week. Like almost a hundred percent. That was the favorite by winter. So I started thinking to myself, you know, wouldn't it be awesome to kind of change up our summer camp and, and maybe do a different theme this year. And so I was talking to my, friend Angela, we were having a, a chit chat and all of a sudden this clear picture revelation of what I should do just dropped in my head. And I'm telling you, whenever that has happened in my life, I just know that it's God. Like that's how he speaks. Like, here's the plan, Corey, just here you go. And it was basically a very succinct, this is what you need to do. Summer camp should be all about crafting and winter camp should be all about self-care. 
boom. Just like that, there was my answer. You made it way too hard. You put too much pressure on this beautiful camp experience and tried to fit a little round peg into a square hole. And really at the end of the day, your dating your goals is a wonderful idea, but why don't you just release it as a self-paced workshop? And those of you who want to learn goal, you know, goal setting that way, you can do that once it, you know, goes up in our brand new classroom, which you guys have yet to see. We have a new classroom environment where we will start um, putting up classes, which we're going to be filming. So, um, this is, uh, this is where we have come to. So we are, I have already, um, just that epiphany was so powerful, was so like, and here's a wonderful thing that I just realized right before I went on the air is the website for the, the beautiful winter camp is actually built. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's an adorable little village. You guys are going to love it. And guess what? It is all themed out for like self-care. It has a little spa and wellness center and everything. So I am already ahead of the game for next winter's camp. And I um, have a fantastic six week camp experience planned for you guys for summer. And I can officially say with confidence that our, um, our summer camp, uh, which is going to be called da -da 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 Camp Wanna Craft. <laughs> Camp Wanna Craft is going to be launching on June 1st and it will be a six week um, summer crafting experience. Every week we are going to focus on specific types of like crafting and, you know, popular things that are, you know, here in the community, but di doing a dive deep on them and, and like breaking out tools you never reach for, learning how to use some of the things that you have, learning how to do some really fun new projects. I am so excited, like giddy excited because this is so in my wheelhouse and is easy to execute. I already have a conjillion ideas and I have a fantastic creative team that I'm sure will be so excited to do this with me. I talked to Miss Tracy Claiborne and asked her if she would be so gracious to do a sing along again for us because that was such a fun day. And she said, of course. So this is going to be the most fun, exciting, no brainer kind of idea. I'm already like thinking through like what movies can we have for movie night? And um, I'd like to do like a Doris Day, you know, night, one of the nights, and maybe have you guys um, vote on the second movie that we have during camp. So uh, Kristen says, you are at your best when you are obedient to God. That is the absolute truth. I felt in my heart that I was like pushing something that just wasn't working. And I am extremely obedient when I feel like God's like, hmm. I am the first to, you know, say that's, I want to, I want to do what he wants me to do. And, um, and that's taken practice. Sometimes you don't always figure it out right away, but I definitely could see that no matter how bad I wanted to make this happen, it just, I was, um, I, I just, it was not flowing it. You know, I'm an idea girl. Things just rocket fire when I'm on a roll and this was not happening. I just could not make this the glorious, fun experience I wanted you to have. Um, so I'm going to release dating your goals within, you know, in a self-paced workshop. And I, I'm not going to tell you when that's going to happen because I do not know. Um, but I am going to get started on summer camp because I'm super excited to do it. Um, and I hope that you guys, uh, in the big scheme of things, as, as disappointed as we might feel about winter camp now, just know that you are going to have an amazing summer camp experience offered to you. Now, I did tell many of you guys, I put a shopping list up and I said, hey, one of the books I really recommend you get is Atomic Goals. So, or, I'm sorry, Atomic Habits by James Clear. So I, those of you who purchased the book, your purchase is not for naught. I, I would like to do like a, um, a YouTube, like a book club, and we can go through the book because that book is bomb. And many of you guys do have goals and habits for the year. I do too. Um, and I realize now that what I want to do is sort of put myself through my own... <laughs> My own workshop, my own little outline that I'd kind of sketched out, I want to prove those things out too. I have big uh, fitness goals. Um, I am making, this is the year 
that I change, that everything changes, that I am headed towards the road down to health, to looking better, to being smaller, the whole nine yards. This is the year. So I, I, again, I don't want you guys to, to think that I'm, I, I, I am really disappointed in myself and I, I promise I give you my pledge going forward that I will not do things like that again. I will not, um, you know, commit or promise to events or things that I'm kind of like, well, yeah, I plan on doing that. I won't do that anymore. Um, because that's not how I want you guys to experience me as being a big old flake. Um, and I, I know that I have, uh, in the past, you know, I'm the queen of good intentions, but sometimes, you know, our RV life has gotten in the way. Sometimes our life circumstances have kind of gotten us off course from what I intended. But um, that's why I'm very pleased to tell you that this year I have set up, set out to just focus on like, I'm going to do one thing each month, one thing. That's my big word. One, one thing for each club, you know, each community, my fat, my faith based community and my crafty community, one thing each month, whether it's for us to talk about a theme, something, and then that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to work on our foundation. We have a gorgeous new website that you guys have not seen. That's so delicious. And there's so many wonderful things going on. We're going to make um, the reset girl easier to navigate. So when you stumble in from YouTube or Instagram or wherever you are and you find me, I want there to be a very easy way for you to be like, okay, well, how do I join the community? So our website is what that needs to be. I want everybody going to the website for different reasons. And so we hired a fantastic, amazing web designer last year. Um, and there have been so many little uh, distractions for me that I have not completed what she needs from me to get all of that finished. So this is the year that's going to happen and you guys are going to get to see the unveiling of the new resetgirl.com. And I, I could not be more pleased. We will also have a brand new classroom environment where you can like purchase classes and it's going to be Reset University. Um, so that will be rolling out uh, this year because um, that's kind of what we want to focus on is doing a lot more like videos and um, just stuff to encourage you guys and stuff that I don't get to like do like a deep dive on and, and some of the things that like really matter to me. One project that, that we have wanted to do for a while and, and we just keep, you know, like there's just always something you're you're trying to like get fixed, you know, before you can move on to the next project. And, and that's doing our, um, his and hers prayer binder workshop. Mr. Crafty is personally invested in getting this done because he wants his little prayer binder and he's just waiting on me <laughs> to get the, you know, get, get sit down together and actually film everything. So I just want you to know that we have lots of little fun things coming. Like that's my job, um, is to get content out like that. Um, I'm doing a refresher for our newsletter, all the different little things that I have mentioned that I've said, it's finally going to be this year is our foundation is going to be properly built and you guys will have like a proper website with, you know, easier to navigate, uh, categories and cause you can see everything we offer, you know, there's not a lot of brands that offer like all the different things that we do. So this will be very fun to kind of like see it in this housed in this new way. So I'm excited to do that. And, uh, we've given a facelift to the little faith, the faithful life club. So it has a, a purpose and mission this year. And that's, you know, the one thing that we can do, uh, each day for the Lord and being little acorns. And then here in the Crafty Club, we are getting craftier than ever, and we will have this fantastic summer camp, you guys, a summer camp for crafting. I mean, how cool is that? So this is a great time. Um, you know, I'm probably going to put a poll up in the, in the group and let you guys like show me what, what crafting are you guys most interested in learning? Um, I want to, I'm going to extend the invitation to my entire creative team, you know, what, project would you like to share and that kind of thing so we can get there'll be lots and lots of content let's just put it that way and the fact that I'm super excited about this <laughs> like this is an easy button for me um, that just tells me that I 
that this is the right move and it's the right thing. And and let's face it, creativity and crafting is the ultimate self care. It's our it's something that we can treat as our go to as creatives here in this particular club. You know, we have a whole late night crafty club based around it. And so it just to me feels like a no brainer. Like this will be something if you guys loved one week of creativity and, and camp reset, you're gonna love six weeks of just having you know all the fun with your craft supplies and you'll get to have a, a tent you know just like you guys get real excited about getting your cabins all set up you will have all of that opportunity again it'll be the fun summer camp and we'll get to uh we will get to do all the crafty things so um beverly says don't beat yourself up <laughs> Thank you very much because that's what I've been doing a whole lot of lately. I've just felt really bad. There's nothing worse than letting down. You guys, it's not just like you're my, this little community and you're these, you're, you feel like our family. You know, we get to do what we do every single day. And the stuff that we're doing is, is because you allow us to come into your life. You, you give us your valuable time. And so I, that's very personal to me. And I, I know your little names and I see these little faces and I very much understand for some of you, um, you know, you might not have friends, you might not have even acquaintances or people you can connect with easily. Um, you might feel a little, a, a little left out. And I completely understand that feeling. I did not have friends, people, for very, very, very much a big part of my life. So, um, I do understand what that's like. And so that's like my little heartbeats for my little introvert sisters. And just the fact that we like, we can come together and kind of like, there's nothing it's a, one of my favorite lines from a movie ever. It's the movie, the story of us with Bruce Willis says like, she got me and there is no greater feeling in this world than being gotten. It is like the best line to me. And it's so true though. There is just no better feeling than when someone gets you. And I think that is part of the magic sauce of this community is that kind of getting. When when we introverts get to talk about our introversion, like we celebrate <laughs> the introversion, right? And when have you ever gotten to do that before? Hasn't haven't you felt left out of the world for so long? You know, and here we are like, yeah, we're here. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> So anyway, um, I just, uh, I just love your little faces. I love that you're in this community and I, I give you my little crafty club pledge to you that you, we, I'm going to knock this out for the summer, our summer camp. It's going to be off the hook. It'll be even better than camp reset. I dare say, um, I am super, super excited to do it. That's for sure. And now I can sleep well. <laughs> like now I'm like giddy. Like, Ooh, what, am I, what are we going to do? Um, I'm excited to really, really challenge myself, you know, to be like a creative and get in there and get my hands all painty. You guys, we should do that. We should have a, oh, I'm going to write this down. I'm getting an idea right now. So we should do like um, a post where we all get like our hands all painty and take a picture of our painty hands. And not because we like painted our hands, but because like we got in there and got messy. We're going to have like messy art projects because I don't, I don't know that I've ever, ever done messy art. I'm thinking about, I have a whole drawer full of acrylic paints from Target, you know, those gorgeous little paints. I've never gotten them all over my hands. I want messy art pictures and we're going to post those up. So it could be like, won't that be fun? And I'm hoping this is, this, this is the year we're going to have a t-shirt y'all, a t-shirt. So merch. <laughs> Karen says that she's an introvert except online, right? Aren't we our best selves online? I love it. So, um, Michelle, the summer camp will be starting June 1st. So that is my pledge. June 1st. I had a lot of teachers reach out to me after camp reset, which I know it did start later this, this, uh, in 2018, it did start later in the year than 2017 did. Um, that mentioned, you know, it would be awesome to start camp sooner because of our teach teaching schedule. And I totally get that. That was not my intention was to make it so late. I think camp started towards like the end of July. So this year, June 1st, it'll be at least six weeks. If I can't like, 
if I can't ra like kind of like wrangle myself in, it might even be longer because I'm telling you, I just, I can't, I can't with all the, the great ideas that I have. And I just want you to have like so much, um, inspiration. You just can't help. Like this will be the summer you really challenge yourself. I know a lot of you were very, very good at buying the craft supplies or not as good at using the craft supplies. I personally think part of that is fear. Part of it is just plain old fear. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to get my stamps dirty. I'm afraid to make a mistake and I can't undo it. You know, it's, it's very easy to just to use that as a reason why you don't do it. Only maybe you don't even know that's the reason you're doing it. But fear, procrastination, um, part of it's perfectionism, part of it you're comparing what you think you're going to do to what she's doing. And sometimes we don't realize that when we compare ourselves to that girl, that girl may have been knocking this out for months on end and she finally got to that level. Like she made a whole lot of, you know, mediocre stuff before she started making this amazing stuff. And so that's the thing is we're, we're just going to like, I want to even have a break it down session where we really do do some pep talk about our creativity and why it's so important to just nurture it, cherish it, treat it like a member of the family. You know, your creativity should be like a, an honored member of the family <laughs> in your heart. So um, we might even do like, I was thinking maybe we should read Big Magic as our little book club session. So um, just know that uh, my intention is to knock your socks off and I, I, am truly, I am, I've learned my lesson about, um, op, being very careful about what I put into the camp environment. Camp will always be a fun, memorable, giddy 12 year old girl feeling. And I will just, I have learned my lesson about, you know, what topic is appropriate for camp because the last thing I, uh, ever want is to ever be in this position again and as God is my witness uh, that shall not be so um, I, I truly appreciate the graciousness that I see going on over here in the chat room about it and for those of you who are grr, at me right now and are just too nice to share which is thank you <laughs> um, please accept my sincere apology for leading you know going down that path and again not not having that worked out completely before I made the announcement. I just was very excited. I wanted you guys to have something fun to look forward to. And, um, and I have learned a very valuable lesson. But again, if you did purchase the book Atomic Habits, it is not for naught because I would like to do a YouTube, um, like book club free. Um, so just so that we can talk about the book, cause the book is killer and there are so many wonderful things I gleaned from just like the reading that I did and I didn't even read the whole book yet. So, um, that would be something I would love to do with you guys for those of you who purchased it because I am all about habits this year and I'm going, and this is one of the habits that I'm going to start doing is, is making sure I have a complete and total plan and have everything mapped out before I say anything. So, um, okay. So I'm just kind of glancing at the chat room right now to make sure I am, um, oh, Kristen says she's determined to get her mom to sign up for summer camp. That is awesome. That, you know what you guys, that is a really great idea. Um, for those of you who have a, a friend or something that just always says she's not crafty or maybe she is crafty, but she's too afraid. This is your chance to kind of be like, look at the, the reset community, you know, more the merrier. And one of the things that I was thinking through too, is I would really like to offer some type of, I have to work out the little details in my mind, but I would really like to offer like an add on or like an additional, like an upgrade or something that, that will have some materials that are like kid oriented. So if you're home with your kids, as many of you will be this summer, or, you know, you're just doing stuff with your kids, that there might be a, a, a way to do some of the little activities with your kids. Um, if that's something that would be interesting, uh, to you. Um, I'll probably throw that into the poll that I'm going to put up. Cause I'd like to see how many people would be interested in doing and in, in that upgrade before I, uh, 
do all the work for it because that would be helpful to know. Maybe some of you guys are like, oh, so sorry, kids. <laughs> Go play outside. Mom's crafting. <laughs> I get the feeling though that some of you wonderful ladies are just like, oh, I really want to do this with my kid. So here'd be a chance to bond with your daughters, you know, and, and do be camp sisters together or, you know, your, your boys want to do stuff. So yes, Diane asked, have you read the power of habit? Diane, I have read it. I actually, I, I, I'm embarrassed to say I've forgotten a lot of it and I probably are going to, I'm going to go back. I've, I have seen him on YouTube several times. Um, in fact, I, um, saved several of his like um, lectures if you want to call it that um, to a little playlist for the camp session so the good news is is that the beautiful camp you know that I we, we set up for winter is going to be waiting for you guys in for winter 2020 um, it'll be waiting and ready for your self-care which in winter is really a wonderful time for self-care because it is kind of cozy and reflective and you can you can go through the resources and and <laughs> videos and everything that I put in there about goals and habits because I'm gonna leave them there for you too. So Renee says I like your new idea better. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, thank you. I'm just gonna pretend that all of you guys feel the same way, and uh, <laughs> so I can sleep tonight. <laughs> um, and. Um, Crystal says her hubby and her, uh, they bought the atomic habits. Um, I'm really glad that you are committed to making good habits. When you really think about goals, all goals are is that it's a system of, of habits that you've put together to, and the, the natural byproduct should be your goal being achieved. That's really what it is. Um, sometimes we make the mistake of just being like, well, my goal is this. And so you approach it in this linear fashion, which oftentimes goals being achieved is don't focus on the goal, focus on building all the little habits that will get you there. So like, let's say you want to lose 10 pounds. So like a really great habits to create are like drinking enough water, getting enough sleep. Those are two things a lot of people do not do as part of their weight loss. They, they, they kind of cut corners and they cheat their way into losing that 10 pounds. And then, but they haven't like established a lot of the habits that will keep that 10 pounds off too. So like cutting out your sugar, maybe you replace one of your meals every um, week with like a plant-based meal. Maybe you eat less meat. Maybe you don't eat fried food. Maybe I stop going to have my Starbucks every morning because I end up with this sugary concoction all the time. So there's like all these little decisions that you make that can help you get there. And it's really interesting when you start just focusing on habits instead of goals. And that was kind of like the cool thing that I was like, uh, really been focused on the last few weeks because I have been, um, working on camp. So um, Erica says I should do a cute apron girl. That's a really good idea, right? Cause won't we all be like all messy and painty this, this summer? That's what I'm saying. Bye miss Cody. I'm glad you were able to catch us, uh, for part of the live and see you in the replay. And, um, uh, oh, Anne says <laughs> she got a new knee for Christmas. I'm so glad Santa brought you a new knee. Boy, I don't want a new knee or a new hip. Boy, as, as we get older, everything starts falling apart on us. <laughs> I don't want hips or knees. Thank you. But, Anne, I'm glad that you, you got one, and I hope that you are healing up nicely. And Mr. Crafty's coming in, so I'm... I just wanted to know, do you want me to keep you updated on the time, or do you just want me to let you go? <laughs> um, that's Spend it. an hour. Oh, okay. So usually I do talk an hour. So I'm just yeah. No, 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 it's fine. I'm just saying like, oh, that's okay. That's pretty good. If you good. want me to just let you go, then you can go. Okay. I think you can let me go now. But right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the update. Does that keep making you click on it? Yes. Michelle says she quit sugar last June. Sugar is definitely the number one thing to break up with. It's a hard thing to break up with. And that's the reason why you need to break up with it. Um, but often people will say that one of the first things that happens when they quit sugar is they automatically, the weight just drops off. So something to think about, but, oh, and this is another question for you guys. So like in the comments, you could, you could respond. So one of the things that I have been, um, it kind of going back and forth in my mind, you'll notice I have not been posting on, I haven't posted on Instagram in a very long while. Um, 
I haven't been posting much and I, I feel like like I encouraged all of you guys to kind of like be in your slow planning mode. I just kind of feel like I'm kind of cozied up in myself and I'm trying to like really kind of figure myself out here. Really what it what is it that I want to do? What what would I naturally be sharing? So one of the things um that I am going to be focused on this year since we're talking about goals and habits is this year I'm going to be focused on like the fitness part of my life and really nailing that down. Um and I was thinking, you know, I'm not going to do it right away. I'm going to do it after I've actually gotten more traction under my feet. Because I don't want to be one of those people that's like, I'm going to do this. I post it something a couple times and then you never hear from me again. So I made a deal with myself. I'm going to start this journey. I'm going to start documenting it, photographs, videos, the whole nine yards. But I'm not going to air any of it until I've gotten down the road a few months. And then I'll be like, okay, now I've proven to myself that I am still walking the talk. And then I can kind of share with you my little journey. So I was just curious, um, because this is kind of messing with my head a little bit, is my Reset Girl Instagram, I go back and forth. I feel like that account was really built on the backbone of being a planner girl. And I have... I. I don't, I don't do that as much as I used to. And I mean, I, I want to share, of course, things like my crafty club playbook. Cause this is like where my real crafting would happen. Um, and the planning that I'm actually kind of like interested in is bullet journaling, believe it or not. I've been watching a lot of bullet journaling videos and there's some, types, the very simple types that are very appealing to me because I'm a lister before I'm really a planner. So that's kind of fun. But I was thinking, you know, what if, what if on my Instagram channel, I started posting pictures of my little smoothie bowls or my salads and the little nourish bowls that I'm, you know, eating and my, you know, kind of like whatever little workout things. If that stuff started coming onto the Instagram channel, that's true to being the reset girl. You know, the reset girl is multifaceted about resetting your life and it's kind of a balance. It's, it's, it's resetting the, you know, the four most important areas, which is our emotional, our mental, our physical, and our spiritual. And when I think about what I'm passionate about, it, they fit into those four things. So if, if my channel sort of meandered a bit and it wasn't just focused on here's my planner <laughs> but here's other aspects of resetting your life would that be interesting to you would you be like ah let's just let's unfollow um i just i guess i'm just trying to get clarity in my head for myself i'm trying to like map out this new course with what i want to do with instagram and i part of me wants to come back part of me is I don't know. I don't know what it is. I feel a little afraid to be honest with you. It's like I'm a little stage fright again. It's so weird. Um, so I was just, Michelle says she just started a bullet journal. Girl, I bet your bullet journal is slamming. You and your gorgeous little doodles and your cute little handwriting. Can I hand you my bullet journal and you do it for me? <laughs> I'll just tell you what to write, Michelle. And you just write it out for me. <laughs> Um, Miss Sing Sing says, I would love to see all that on Instagram. Yay. Um, I know that, so the, you, here's something I have actually done one story ever on Instagram. I just did like my very first one, I don't know, like a month ago. Um, and I, uh, was thinking that, um, I would keep the, that kind of stuff on the stories and then just do like the crafty stuff on Instagram. But then I'm like, you know what? This is a, this can be inspiring and helpful to other people when they see like, hey, I'm really trying to like get the whole picture together. Not just like I'm just not work. I'm working on more than just my crafty life. I'm working on my fitness. I'm working on my faith. I'm this is like the whole thing. And, you know, and, and my occasional bouts with when I say bouts, like literally fighting depression sometimes, you know, which is not necessarily tied to like everything's going well in my life. Therefore, I shall have no depression. Sometimes it just like, hey, I'm just going to make you feel blue for um, because I feel like it. Take that. Um, so 
Karen says her IG is about whatever I am in the moment. Scenery pics, planner stuff, kitty cats, really anything that inspires me or I love in the moment. <sighs> Vanessa says, I think your IG should follow whenever, wherever your reset uh, is in your life. If it's fitness posts about it, if it's planning, do that. So, uh, Magnolia, love the name, says, yes, I will be more interested because of your purpose and intention behind your posts. Um, Miss Sing Sing says, post on Instagram where you are at. True. Hi, Miss Monique. <laughs> Wave back. <laughs> uh, Karen says, any posts are fun. I enjoy when you post through your RV window. Um... Nita says, so will there only be summer camp this year? So um, technically, this is what's going to happen, I think, with the timing of things. So we will have summer camp uh, June 1st, Miss Nita. I will be, we're going to be releasing some workshops during, through the, our Reset University. And then I'm going to have winter camp uh, for 2020. I'm probably going to open that right after Christmas or before Christmas. I'm guessing that you could like purchase it in December and then it will go like live. I, I know that I kind of like am torn because for me personally, right after Christmas, I was like ready to jump in to doing something. A lot of you are struggling with like, you still have the kids. The kids haven't gone back to school yet. Um, you usually have them for a whole other week. Um, you're trying to get the house, you know, everything kind of go back to normal. So I know not everybody's in that place where they're ready to dive right into camp. So I'm thinking though that it will be kind of open. So technically it would kind of like the little doors would start creaking open at the end of next, at the end of this year. So, um, and, uh, so, but technically it would be for 2020. So that was kind of a long way to answer your question, Nita. <laughs> Um, and Michelle says she posts her food on Instagram because it keeps her accountable on her weight loss journey. Plus she's a foodie. I have to tell you guys, I actually went, um, it took me a while to jump back on Instagram. I have actually not been on it for a very long time. So I got back on it and I, and I, I don't know. It's so weird. I felt like afraid to go on it. I don't know. So I get on it and then I just kind of start housekeeping. So I started unfollowing accounts that don't like bring me joy when I see them. And, um, and I started following a bunch of people who do like a lot of plant-based eating because the pictures are like so eye candy. They're so gorgeous and they make me excited to learn how to cook that way. Cause that's my new normal now. So that's been fun. So now when I open Instagram, it's just full of like stuff that just delights me. It's exciting because it's, it's kind of food and bullet journaling. So I, so I asked myself, well, if you like that, why wouldn't other people like that? I don't know. I, I don't know how everyone feels about their Instagram. Instagram is a very personal thing to people. I'm just, you know, obviously you can't be everything to everyone. I was just kind of curious, um, how people felt about seeing things on that channel. I've just kind of come to this like, <laughs> and stopped and I'm and then having a little bit of a tough time moving forward. Um, Monique says, let the Lord lead and guide you as you have. Yes. Even the Lord directs with Instagram. And I truly believe in my heart of hearts that, that he's a big reason why that account, you know, grew to, to what it did. So it's just a matter of me getting back on that little Instagram horse and riding it <laughs> to the next town. Um, uh, oh, but Nita, one thing I did say, if you happen to buy the book Atomic Habits, I'm going to be doing some, um, kind of, uh, I'm going to be doing some YouTube videos, like a book club, probably we'll need to do them live because obviously that way you guys can interact. Um, if I just film it and put post it, it's a little harder for you guys to do that. Um, but I will be doing that. If you happen to have purchased the book Atomic Habits, we can talk about that in there. And so that is another thing going on. So it will, we will still continue talking about habits. Um, and I can hopefully encourage you through doing that. Um, Jeanette is live streaming us, uh, while she's traveling to her sister's house. Uh, yes, be heard the train. That was the train. 
It does that pretty much hour on, upon hour. Um, it's actually quite soothing. At first I was like, oh, I forgot how loud that train is. But then after a while, you just, it's funny how you just acclimate to stuff like that. One thing I have a hard time believing you can acclimate to is like living under like a flight path, like a, a, a the, the kind where the airplane comes down low about to land. If you live under that, I have a hard time. That, that's a hard one for me to believe that you can really not hear it anymore. It's so loud. So, uh, be it is well, it, um, Instagram is a combination of pictures that, that are posted and then people write a little caption and now they have video. So there's, different ways of experiencing Instagram. So they are very much moving into a more video based platform as well. Um, which is what you see a lot with because Facebook owns them. They both are like very video oriented. Did you guys know that I have actually been to the Facebook Instagram campus? Like I've been, I've gotten a tour. I actually got to go on the Instagram offices. <laughs> uh, I got to go to the Instagram, the Instagram, the Facebook campus. Um, I got to like go, I mean, like literally into like their offices and everything. I never shared that. I know what the heck, but I never shared that on my Instagram that I was actually at Instagram. Um, I actually, uh, have a very sweet, sweet, sweet friend that reached out and said, Hey Corey, would you like to, um, you know, meet me here? I work at Facebook. Um, and she had me, I, I met, I drove over there and I met with her and we spent um, a bunch of hours together and she gave me the whole tour. We had lunch there. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing place to work. Holy cow. But um, yeah, I took lots of pictures. Of course, they're very supportive of taking pictures, right? At Instagram. <laughs> um, Kathleen asked about our membership. Are we going to start our membership this year? So I did not mention that. So the membership is is uh, on hold for the moment because I want to make sure I've done the two things that I'm committing to right now, which are the two camps. And I, I'm trying to find how the, um, now that we've taken away the goal setting camp experience, the membership, I want to make sure that it is, uh, I want it to be like worth your time. I want it to be worth, you know, you, you being in there. I want you to be excited about it. So I want to make sure we have a very clear vision, complete and total, no matter what camp we offer, what happens in that membership. So I'm putting a pin in it for right now because I just, I want to make sure that it's just right. Like it's a total Goldilocks experience when you guys get in there. Um, but it is all set up. Mr. Crafty has it all set up and it's, it's really cute. So um, I just want to, like I said, um, Chandra says, I have missed you on IG. Thank you so much, sweet girl. And, um, I miss being on there. Here's the funny thing about Instagram that used to feel like my full-time job. I posted on there six to seven, like five to six times a day, every day, week in, week out, five to six times a day, you guys. I'm not even kidding. I even like set my alarm so it would go off every two hours and I would post, post, post. I was like on it. And that's a big reason why my account grew so large is I was just super, super consistent. I was so motivated. And part of what I did then, and I realize now I almost feel like I have to do this again, is I used to participate in a lot of photo challenges. There was a lot of like planner photo challenges. I don't know if they even still have photo. Have you guys seen a planner challenge in a long time? Um, I, I haven't. And, um, well, I haven't been on there to be honest with you. So that I'm not really a good example, but, um, I definitely, um, want to, oh, sorry, just catching up here with my little, um, chit chat. I, I totally lost what I was saying. I lost my track. Mr. Crafty, what was I just saying? I literally, I literally just forgot. Thanks, honey. <laughs> That's so helpful. <laughs> I, guess, I guess the live isn't far enough back for you. It isn't. Okay, so I was asking about the photo challenges, and yes, Kristen, that was a big old squirrel, and then it 
totally like erased my memory. So yes, I was talking about photo challenges and that is literally what helped me build my account for a very long time. The, the content on my account is I used photo challenges. I would just answer the prompt and I was like really like on it. I did two of them every single month. So think about that. That's like 60 photos right there that you're doing every single month, just responding to prompts. So I started thinking about it. I'm like, man, maybe I should just create my own photo challenge just so it gives me some kind of guidance <laughs> to do something. So, um, uh, Courtney says she got her crafty husband to watch. Hi, crafty husband. <laughs> Hi, Courtney's husband. That's awesome. Um, so I used to get them from I'm trying to think who was one of the very first planner challenges like this is like we have to go back to 2014 this is the that's when I first joined like the very beginning of 2014 is when I first joined the planner community and it was smaller then and there was a, a couple photo challenges that circled around and I used to do this I used to like cut them out even and like paste them in my traveler's notebook and then I would write out all the prompts I was gonna do like how I was gonna plan out my prompts and 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 then I was like as soon as I got home from work I was like I'm gonna style my pictures and and I learned how to style photos and I just loved it it just gave me so much joy so that is what I need to get back to is that kind of like fun again so I don't know how many of you guys do photo the, the planner challenges mm. Mm. isn't this music great it's so it's so classy Jacqueline says her theme for her IG is just random stuff. Um, Facebook commenters are wondering if you can see them. All of a sudden, I, the only Facebook commenters I see is Karen and Jacqueline. Most of the comments in the group are all Facebook. No, there are, there are Facebook, but most of them are YouTube. Hello, YouTube. I, I'm so glad to be back on the YouTube platform with my lives. I didn't used to. Mr. Crafty's coming in. They are kind of mixed in there. There's both, but for a little bit there, it looked like most of it was. Yes, Kristen, it's very grown-up music in here. Mr. Crafty and I are very grown-up. We're very adulty. <laughs> Sarah says that she does the planner challenges. The girl on a jet says that she's always wanted to try one. Hi, faithful planner girl. Susan says she's never heard of photo challenges. So usually you can see them when like at the it, like at the end of the month, people who do them will post a new photo challenge for the next month. If you like look up hashtag photo challenge, hashtag planner challenge, hashtag planner photo challenge, you will probably find old ones. That is what I would recommend doing. Um, that's what I did the other day to see like, hey, does anyone still do those anymore? Um, so yes, I actually am contemplating doing my own because at least <laughs> it'll get me going instead of being such a, so lame. Karen, uh, didn't even pay attention to where she came in on. I think that's kind of funny. I don't even know like, uh, if you how you would see the you like how you'll even see that I'm doing a live unless you I guess if you have your notifications turned on that's probably it so how many of you guys are here because you saw a notification and like so it could have been from YouTube or it could have been from Facebook and you didn't even see it you didn't see which one you just it just said the reset girls live I am just so curious how many of you guys came here from that and how many of you prefer YouTube over Facebook I'm curious about that so one one thing YouTube has going for it is that um, the chat room will stay with the live whereas the Facebook chat room will go away so if I took my Facebook video my live and I put it up on my website you can't see the chat room anymore you can only see it if you watch it from inside of Facebook but YouTube does not do that YouTube is a little sweeter they'll let you keep your chat room 
And the only people, like the chat room is not really a, a concern to you is if you're watching me on a replay, which you probably are right now. And most of you will be watching this as a replay. And all this chat about the chat room is just like blah, blah, blah. Um, so uh, Melissa says that I should have a daily challenge to drink camp. You know, that would be an awesome idea. In fact, one of the ideas I actually had for camp was doing a little photo lesson. How many of you guys would like to learn how to take better photos of your, you know, your little crafty projects and stuff? Learning how to take great photos is, you know, if you care about growing your Instagram or you care mostly caring about it from like a business perspective because maybe you have like a little Etsy shop that you're trying to promote and like learning how to take good photos is very key. These are things I learned like self-taught figuring out how to take these great photos and I love it. Love it. But not everybody does. Some of people don't find that to be like it's hard to learn and so YouTube over Facebook for sure. Michelle uses all caps so that we know exactly how she feels. <laughs> Hi, Lisa saying, hey, um, and Miss Lady Prepper asks, are me and Mr. Crafty still going to make our prayer binders? And yes, I was mentioning that earlier that Mr. Crafty has all of his little supplies in a box. He's all ready to go. Huh? You're just I do. There's right out there. Yep. He has them all ready. He's dying to get his little prayer binder on. I'm the one holding up the show. Maybe we should work on that this weekend. We have this really cute little classroom environment that our web designer built for us so that we can like load up the videos and then you'll it will be very easy for you guys to take a class from us and you can just can watch the different videos so it would be really cool so some people got a message from Facebook some and some people prefer Facebook over YouTube and but a lot more saying definitely YouTube So interesting. There's a few of you guys are definitely interested in the photo class. So I'm going to be posting a poll in the Facebook group and I would be so curious if you guys, um, I, I would be curious to see all of that transpire. It's like how many people would actually love to see a little photo class. All right. I've done a bunch of chit chat. I'm all chatted out. So now it's time to actually do some crafting, which is, you know, so it's not the late night chat club. <laughs> Can we switch the camera? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So um, before I jumped on here, I was actually looking through my book and I was kind of like answering some of my questions and it raised a kind of a funny question for me. So I'm going to ask you guys and you uh, tell me. Um, so one of my favorite pages in the, in the uh, Crafty Club, Club playbook is the documented page. This one right here where you kind of like fill it in what's going on. Now, um, I will forewarn you that we're actually going to give a facelift to this particular page. So the spring edition will look different. And there's a reason why. There's a reason why we're doing that. Because I'm actually releasing, I'm not going to tell you when, but we are actually, we built a planner, believe it or not. A planner that kind of complements the playbook so it has the same look and style and so there's planning pages um, that, that kind of like can blend in here if you wanted them to or you could have it as a standalone planner um, so I decided that this page kind of belongs more with the planner and then I we are we designed a different page for the crafty club playbook so it's more craft focused and you can like document your crafting and it's like more specific to what we do in the club like if you got to come to a late night crafty club that kind of thing so that's what we're doing we're kind of swapping them out um, so it makes it more specific to the crap wife. The list, everything else will stay the same though. The list pages are another favorite of mine because I think it's fun. Um, how many of you guys did your, um, this page here, which is the maze? This is the page I need to, I think this, this, ma this maze is harder than I gave it credit because when I like tried to do it with a pencil, <laughs> I couldn't solve it. 
So um, I started doing my gratitude page. So this is how lame I am. Like I didn't get very far with this. I like to do the first four and then that was it. Cause I was like in this really, I was in a funk. I was totally, every day was winter camp, winter camp, winter camp. And I just, I let all of this go, but you know what? I'm going to hit the reset button and I'm going to go back and I'm going to find something to say. So I will show, I will be accountable. I will find something positive to say for each of these little spaces. Um, because I want to make sure I do that. I did one page for my memory keeping and now I'm going to do the art journaling pages because that's kind of my favorite. The thing I was looking forward to the most. I have my little art journaling prompts page of prompts. Um, I did consider like just cutting up the, cutting them all out and like putting them in a little dish or like a little box or something and just kind of pulling them at random and like whatever I picked up, I picked up. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my first page, which I had not, have not done yet, which is, uh, the prompt I picked for my first page is word for the year. So I have that one. And I went to Joann's. Now, I have been purchasing some craft supplies over the last month because I was getting ready for winter camp and there was things I wanted to make for that. Um, but I have been purchasing some things and I'm probably going to do a regular YouTube video. Another area of my life that I want to like ramp up and do better on is YouTube. I have so many ideas for videos. Um, I just need to sit down and record things and I feel like now that I've sort of simplified my life and like I'm doing two camps this year I'm gonna do a couple um, classes I feel like yes Corey just get back in the YouTube seat and and go because I really really love YouTube that's really um, that's really a, a warm and fuzzy place for me so I bought these today. I, me and Tracy ran, we were out doing an errand and we stopped at Joanne and Joanne has these stamps and I got them from like, they're kind of like little dollar bin. Um, they were $1.99 each for clear acrylic stamps, which is a bargain. And I got this bomb typewriter font stamp. And what I love about this is I'm going to show you guys. Look how much it looks like my favorite typewriter font that I use for everything. Looks just like it. How fun, right? And it was $1.99 at Joanne. The other cool thing that they had in that same bin was this, font, this stamp set. It's like little arrows. And this little arrow here that's all squiggly. Okay, hang on. I gotta <laughs> hold it right. This one right here. Okay, this is so awkward. The camera makes everything look backwards when I go to look at it. So let me see if I can, this little one right here. I am so in love with that little arrow with the little squiggles. I love it. I, I love this one right here. This is another fun one. So I thought I'm gonna try these little stamps out tonight on in my crafting, getting my crafting on. What else did I get? Oh, the other thing I got to do this year, what did I do with them? I, I signed up for, <laughs> let's see if I actually do it this year. I signed up for Allie Edwards, um, one little word, her little workshop. So I've signed up for it in 2016 and 2017 and never did it. So 2019 is going to be the year I do. And I bought the little photo album, like the little skinny one. And I bought her stamp set and I bought some pieces because this is the year I am doing memory keeping. And I think the one little word thing is really cool and it's like an easy way of kind of baby stepping your way into memory keeping. So another uh, area, I might have shared these on the last Late Night Crafty Club, but another a place I grabbed some stamps from was the feedyourcraft.com. And I grabbed this one. Oop. Sorry, this collection right here, which I thought is so stinking adorable. It's just like fun little. Yeah, I must have used this last year or last month because I used that one. See, I don't clean my stamps. Dirty little stamps. So anyway, I thought I would try some of this out with you here. 
get some get serious now with our crafting it's crafting time Jennifer is doing the um, one little word too. How many of you guys are doing the one little word workshop this year? I jumped on it like as soon as it opened. I was probably like her second, third customer in line. I was just like, I'm doing it. I got so excited. I'm like, this is it. This is happening. This is going to be two things for me. This is going to be a healthy year and a crafty year. Because A, I got my crafty mojo back in the middle of last year. And I am so, so serious about my health and fitness, like super serious. In fact, I have, um, I'm going to be like crafting up vision boards and crafting up, um, lots of things to help keep me motivated. And so that's kind of some of the stuff too, that I wanted to share on my Instagram. Um, I even thought like one of the, my favorite, favorite things to, to find and people do is like what I wore Wednesday and people take pictures of their outfits. Like I just, I don't know what it is about it, but I really love finding accounts like that. It's hard to find women our age, like the Gen Xer age group that, that do that. And so I thought, you know, I would find that super inspiring. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll get like, get myself my, get my act together and I'll start doing that on my Instagram is like what I wore Wednesday. If anything, it will make me actually, you know, <laughs> put on proper clothes. <laughs> um, so <sighs> yeah, Diane says that she signed up for a couple times and didn't do much with it. It's terrible. It's one of the, again, one of those things where you, it's a, it's being, having good intentions. But, um, another thing that Mr. Crafty gifted me for Christmas was a photography class, um, for the iPhone, which I'm excited about because I just got the brand new 10 X M X R X S <laughs> the big, the big, uh, brand newest one they have. And, um, a lot of the settings have changed since I had the six. So I need to learn all kinds of stuff with that. And this, this, uh, ad popped up on Facebook, them and their ads. They get me every time, but uh, his class looked bomb. So I signed up for that. So I'm, I'm going to learn how to properly use my, Instagram, Instagram, properly use my iPhone camera, like really learn how to use it, use it. That would be helpful, right? Then I could take really good pictures. All right. I'm just pulling out some things here. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I just like to be, I like to be in the moment. I'm pulling out my little box. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to, sometimes I just like being on camera like this and just talking to you guys. And then I'll just hold up my page when I actually put something down. It's, I don't know, it makes me feel like I'm a little bit more like involved than when the camera just comes down on my desk and then I feel like I'm being left out of the group. <laughs> Is that weird? Have I said too much? Um, okay, I'm looking for my little... I'm looking for one of my many little record player boxes because they have like a variety of different types of ephemera. And I want to make sure there's another one, it's a larger one. This one's got big pieces of ephemera like magazine pages and stuff. See, wouldn't this be great for like my little fitness thing? Eat well, but wisely. Lies. All those food advertisers are just full of lies. <laughs> Some of the ones I've seen like just make me eye roll. Like, how could you how could they have lied so much? So I love ads like these where they have like the little hairstyles and stuff. These little these little women look so smug. But in a cute way. Like smug in a cute way. Like I'm smug because I'm so cute. Okay. C 
Crystal, um, I forgot you are in Australia, and right now you guys are in summer, so it's probably pretty hot um, where you are. It's so funny to me that you guys experience like the complete opposite of what we do because you are below the equator. It's like bizarro world. <laughs> okay. And just like I'm sure it's probably weird to you guys that we are in the winter like snow and ice for some of us, not all of us. Unfortunately, some of us do not get the snow and the ice. The Tennessee was kind of um a very hit and miss this time. Last last year we had like much more snow. There was like more icy snow days where we were inside. And today was not so much. Like this this year was not so much like that. Chandra is hosting her vision board party. Yay! How fun. I'm just pulling out little strips of paper. Just little pieces of stuff just random -y. that's kind of what I wanted to try this year was just to be more like mixed media ish like try to be more random and not like not things don't have to have meaning and all the time just throw stuff on there be crazy it's the thing I appreciate most about mixed media is how like random it can feel and how unique and different. And so I just want to get get more of that going on in my own art, my own creativity. Okay, I'm just throwing paper down just trying to find something that will work with this I love purchasing ephemera like receipts and ledger paper and bills and like people's handwriting on like scraps of paper I love crafting with stuff like that it's so much fun and it's so much better than it just ending up in the you know in a uh what am I trying to say? End up in a, what do you call the dump? There's a better, nicer way to call it than the dump. End up in a landfill. Landfill, that's the word. <sighs> yes, Karen says uh, she remembers living in California where it was 70 to 80 at Christmas. Agreed. I grew up in San Diego. It never felt like it was any season. It was always warm. So that's kind of been something that, you know, when you move to a different environment, makes you appreciate all of it all the more because you just didn't, you didn't get it enough. And even when I'm like living in Washington, I feel like, hey, there's not enough snow here. This isn't enough. I want it to be really snowy. Okay, so I am just, I'm just throwing down paper.
Good night, Claudine. Okay, I think I'm going with this little layout I have kind of assembled here on my page. Let me see here. I like the colors. Mr. Crafty decided to move my camera because <laughs> some people were like, we want to see what she's doing. Absolutely. So I have this fun box of washi. It's one of the candy boxes that I got when I was in Gatlinburg. It's this really cute little taffy logs box. So I filled it full of my washi to store while we when we're traveling um, and I just left it in here because I really think it looks yummy it's like looks like candy so uh, I've just pulled this out trying to like find some fun washi to complement my little arrangement here um, so I think I'm gonna just start gluing this stuff down and, and then I'm gonna stamp Okay, so one thing I have learned Okay, so <laughs> I have learned this little trick for myself because I will instantly forget what it was I was what how I had everything set up so I have propped up my phone right here so I can see what I did so if this feels like you this is a good little tip so sometimes I just want to play around with the pieces and kind of like let them find where they want to be and then you have to move everything to glue it down so rather than completely lose where you were I'm gonna get Here's that delicious like ledger paper I bought in a pack of uh, ephemera. Etsy and eBay are really great places to find that. My my go-to place for um, vintage ephemera is the paper basket on Etsy. Katie is my girl. She has such adorable stuff. I like buy from her probably every other month. I would say. I like to replenish because she like must go to a lot of estate sales. She always has like such fun stuff. So I try to give her a shout out so you guys can. Uh... I feel like I'm always torn. I, I like supporting her like shops like that. But on the other hand, I'm like, I don't want you guys to buy all my <laughs> the stuff I love. <laughs> I know how you guys are. Okay, so I'm just uh, gluing down some paper and already I'm sort of uh, pasting this down differently than was in my photo so that's funny I forgot to look at my photo <laughs> one that I took forgot all about it okay so I'm gonna erase that Ooh, this is actually the wrong side of the map see I'm doing things all cuckoo now it's okay though This was a postcard that I got with some washi that I bought, and I just thought it was like, isn't that cool? It looks all vintagey. The phone camera um, doesn't, uh, what is the word? Focus as good as the other one does. 
Come on, focus. It doesn't auto focus? It is not auto focusing. Just FYI. Hmm. Wasn't that interesting? <laughs> Sorry, my sweet girl. That was unintentional. Yes, Miss Kristen says the paper pippy. Um, I I follow her on Instagram too. She has a lot of adorable stuff. Okay, so let's see here. That is here. The cool thing about Ledger is it has like this natural little like grid kind of place so when you place your paper it can you can line it up against the lines to keep it nice and even please tell me I did not mess that up okay so here's my girl I think I'm gonna move her a little bit more over than I originally had her either I can make her even with this bottom this bottom edge of this so she's sitting like that or I can bring her down so she's resting on this edge the only thing I don't love about that is it creates this white space right here which can be rectified if I put down some washi so for instance let me show you what I mean so I'm trying to close this gap right here And here's an example, you guys. What if we had like a fun, like layering 101 class? I have asked that question before. How many of you would be interested in like learning how to layer stuff? Um, but what if there was like a whole little workshop on layering in um, our summer camp? Okay, so let's say I place that there and now that kind of, it it's resting right on the very edge of this dotted line on so that see how that looks better because it's kind of filling it in I could probably do that over here okay so let me try doing that turning down the trumpet <laughs> that's right above my ear, my little head here. Okay, so I'm putting down some washi over here and then she'd kind of like be right there. That looks better. Now, this, now what's bugging me is this right here, this white gap right there. What if I moved her all the way over? Still the gap. always comes down to like if something is bothering your eye in in this case it this kind of is bothering me but I'm not I'm not a hundred percent like let me see here maybe it just needs a little bit of help so let's say I put washi this way that helps okay I just grabbed some random stickers up here on my desk, like on my thing here. I'm just trying to decide which one I want to use. That's adorable. It's one of my favorite stickers is the green and blue. It reminded me so much of Kate Spade. I'm just looking for some fun stickers that kind of like give you a little pop of like pattern and color. Okay, I'm going to put two together. So she kind of wants to be I don't know. I'm kind of like not sure where I want her now.
even though she lines up, there's a line right here. You can't really see it, but there's a line right here. And, and to me, resting her on that line, it's sort of like, feels like it's giving her a shelf. <laughs> even though she's technically still sort of floating, but I still like it. And I feel like I like this almost better than when she's down here. Because then there's this kind of like awkward white space. And I feel like it changes. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm right about these things. I just like go by what, like, what my eyes trying to tell me. Like something's not right, Corey. You need something here. Okay. Get some gluing. I don't even have my... <gasps> I just ripped her little face! That... Sorry, lady. I totally ripped her. Also, now I don't remember how far over she was. I'm putting her right there. Okay. We're going to cover up that rip by <laughs> gluing her very well. Lisa says, paste that smug hairdo lady. There she is in all of her smug glory. I have pasted her down. So right now there's two places where I want to um, stamp my word for the year. Part of me wants to stamp it here because I have this lovely little white space right here. Part of me also sees this as a white space option too. This place over here makes me feel like I want to put like a pattern down or something or like, you know, maybe... Look what I'm doing, you guys. I kind of feel like the rings are kind of in my way. So I'm going to pull my page out and just get that out of this. Get get it out of there. And now I'm also going to attempt to pull my... Uh, okay. Got to get my yum. <laughs> my little matte keep it from getting glue all over my tabletop okay so where's my stamp my stamp is here my big bird sleeves are in the way okay so I'm gonna get my stamp block and I'm gonna Okay, so in the um, comments, I would love everyone to tell me what they are binge watching recently. What are you watching? And let us say, um, let's say it could be like guilty pleasure TV, stuff you wouldn't want to tell your like friend in real life, but you can tell us. It stays in the club. But what kind of, uh, what TV are you wa binge watching lately? I'll, I will admit what started watching it's embarrassing but um but you guys go first okay and I am struggling to get the stamp off the backing and I'm not sure why like it doesn't want to come off is it me or is it the stamp Ugh. it's almost like it's fused on there or something maybe I've not ever used any of these Kind of like stamps from Joanne. Holy cow. That did not want to come off. Ah. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm seeing why these were $2? <laughs> Maybe there's a reason why it's worth paying more money for better... Okay, has anyone confessed? I want true confessions up in here. Let's see here. Judge Judy. Good Erica. I like it. Uh, Melissa says Battlestar Galactica. I'm seeing yes. Dallas. I'm seeing some of you guys are watching the Marie Kondo series, The Art of Tidying Up. Mind Hunter just finished uh, Marvelous Mrs. Mazel. Miss Angela. Battlestar my, Galactica. My we should watch that. Sweet That's friend. Cool. I watched season one. I don't know if I'm going to watch season two of that one, but I will say the, the, like the fashion, the sets and everything. Oh, 
to die for. Um, Joanne is watching YouTube mixed media ideas. Love it. Uh, Caroline says the office always girl. Me too. I have watched the office so many times. I don't really enjoy the last season. I don't generally watch. I, I feel like my sweet spot is watching seasons one through seven and then that's it. I feel like it, it just, it's not the same thing after Michael left. <laughs> so I, last night I put it on for the first time in many months. I was like, maybe I'm ready to watch it again. Okay. It's one of those shows that's like just great to have on in the background if you just, you know. Yes, Diane agreed. These stamps do not stick as fabulously as they stick way too much to this, to this, and not enough to this. So I cannot, I, I, I can't say that these are probably a recommended purchase. I, even for $2, I'm kind of disappointed. They're like really hard to get off of this. I almost feel like I'm damaging the stamp pulling it off. I've never seen a stamp that hard to work with. Um, Angela says Chicago Med. Heidi says 24 Bachelor. Um, yes, I agree. Purple plays the purple paisley planner. I am afraid of breaking a nail. Um, Luke Martin and Mark Wines. They both do food vlogs. Um, yes, Angela agreed. The, that's yes. The language is kind of a lot. The it's a little much. <laughs> it's like a little pearl clutching for me. <laughs> um, Holly's Adventure Time. Um, Sarah says NCIS and, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Brandy says all of the terrible serial killer slash true crime documentaries. Brandy, I cannot believe how much stuff they just, I just saw last night when I turned on Netflix, they have a whole thing on Ted Bundy. I think personally that there's like this really serious rise of like interest in that topic and they are cranking out more and more stuff from like the 80s and the 90s are like they're I see more of that trend of putting on some of the some people that you know younger generations have heard of but don't know anything about it's becoming a more general topic I hate to admit this but I have I read my first serial killer book when I was like 11 um so I have always kind of studied it, followed it for many years. Um, and then it became more mainstream and, and now everyone watches it and stuff. And it I, I made me feel like a little less <laughs> like there was something wrong with me. <laughs> um, Melissa never saw the office. Melissa, let's talk. Is there something holding you back? Is there, a, is there a reason? Did you, have you never worked in an office? Perhaps you feel like you don't identify with these characters. Have you heard bad things about it? What could be the reason for not watching it? Okay. That looks really cool. Like it was intentional. Like it was part of the paper. Um, Sandra says, I cannot get enough of Pam and Jim on the office. Um, Midsummer Murders, um, Grace and Frankie, the Netflix series Lost Art from World War II. That is another trend I'm seeing a lot lately is World War II. World War II and Nazis. This is like, there's a lot. I was really surprised with how many like documentaries and um, just really a lot of fascination with it. I, let's see. I was actually playing um, Call of Duty with Mr. Crafty and we were playing Call of Duty World War II. It was actually, it was really sad playing it because it was like recreating some of the famous battles and it was just, I don't know, it made you really realize what, what a like serious war that was, how like 
gripping and on the like they didn't have all the technology we have where they can keep a distance from things like they are literally like hand to hand combat and stuff it was just really um i don't know it was it was very i can't think of the word it was very emotional playing the game it wasn't like just a game to me it made, made me like think a lot about all those poor young men Okay, what else we got here? Grey's Anatomy, Grace and Frankie, Grace and Frankie, Midsummer Murders. Um, Celia says, I've never been able to get into the office, uh, but uh, now office space, I love. Um, Michelle says, I really tried hard to get into the office. It just wasn't as funny to me as everyone else thinks it is. <laughs> um, Schlitz Creek. Uh... Okay. All right. Um, friends. What else do we got? Let's see, Hawaii Five O. Okay, so I'm gonna ask a question, but you guys promise not to judge me. Okay, so how um, have you guys ever seen this series? Uh, okay, there's actually two of them. <laughs> this is again, please don't judge me. But one of them is called Ninety Day Fiance, and the other one is called Love After Lockup. I'm admitting so much about myself right now. I hope that, again, this all stays in the club. It's late night. We're letting our hair down. Things are getting real personal up in here. Uh, Megan says, uh, When Calls the Heart. I love that show. Megan, I did watch that show. It is so sweet. It reminds me of Anne of Green Gables. Like how that was like such a very sweet and wholesome show. I loved it. Okay, I'm looking for validation. I'm looking for friends that can say, yes, I have watched these shows. I wouldn't admit this to anybody. <laughs> okay, Diane says, I've never heard of either one. Paula just laughed. I'll, I'll take that as a hint, Paula. Um, Tina says, I've watched Love After Lockup. And Sherry says, I love them. So I'm, I'm thinking that means both of them. So... Um, Mallory says, nope, neither one of them. Um, Angela says, she's still missing the Hallmark Christmas movies. And then Linda says, I am so judging you now. <laughs> um, so Barbara says she liked 90 Day, but not the other. I have to tell you, sometimes it's hard to watch shows. Like, I mean, I think this was something I was watching when I was down and a little depressed. I'll, I'll be the first to admit not something I would normally gravitate to, but sometimes when you watch people make such catastrophic decisions with their lives, it's like you want to reach through the TV and shake them. No, <laughs> what are you thinking? Like there was a part of me that was just wanted to mother them. Like, please don't do this terrible thing on, on a life after lockup. Cause you know, it's going to end badly all the way around. So Yes, that is my admission. It is, uh, Sandra says 90 Day Fiance is infuriating, but I watch it too. And Jennifer says, I just can't. I cannot co-sign. <laughs> Megan says, I haven't seen either one, but I want to now. They are on WeTV, and I wouldn't even have access to WeTV had we not signed up for YouTube TV. So YouTube, t uh, YouTube TV is really awesome. You can watch regular network television on it and it, it has like a DVR function so you can have it record things. So I never even heard of these shows until we had this YouTube TV thing and it is a train wreck. I don't watch any of that other kind of stuff. Like I've never watched The Bachelor or Big Brother or any of that. Um, that's generally just not something interesting to me. But as I said, I was having a very weak moment and I ended up watching this and I'm just, I was really attracted to it in terms of like, how could people make such huge mistakes with their lives? It was like the mom in me, the counselor in me that I just wanted to be like, no, stop. But, um, yes, I feel waves of judgment right now though. I will say that. <laughs> okay. Ah, this washi not behaving. So I gotta find something else here. 
You know what? I just realized what I could use for this white space. Let's do this. Art journaling is really an opportunity for you to journal. How about if I put some journaling lines so that I actually have space for journaling? How about that? That is a very clever solution to a big problem I have here. So I better find a lot to say about this word. <laughs> okay. How about that? And then I'll just write out my answer. So it's truly journaling with art. Okay. So I'm still looking for other things to do here with my little space. Um, I would love to use my new arrow stamp. So here we go. Let's fight with this. Oh, this one's coming off way easier. This is just a better stamp. Maybe I just got a bad stamp. I don't think so, but that stamp came off a lot better. Okay, so with this one, I want to make sure that I am stamping. Stamping where I'm supposed to stamp. So this time I think I'm going to use some black to do this. The last Alaskan Amber Horn. I saw um, a couple of those episodes, and uh, it was very fascinating. That's that's being a true introvert, man. That's like not even seeing anybody. I could not imagine living that isolated. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so I like that little squiggly, arrowy thing. I also feel, feel another cool thing I liked about this stamp set were these fun kind of like... So I'm going to stick this one on. But I'm going to go back to using brown for this one. That is certainly, um, Celia mentioned, uh, I think it was Celia. Maybe I'm wrong. Yes, Celia did. Maybe the other stamp set got too hot or too cold at some point. That's very, it's, something is definitely up with it because it, the, it, the plastic is like fused and I just don't think that's just because they're cheap. It seems almost as if they are s somehow not functioning. And Mr. Crafty, what's going on there, sir? Well, this uh, chat room thing, uh, you always having to put the down thing is kind of bothering me. So I'm, they have one of their options that I'm looking at. They have a program that you can download and use. So I'm wondering if that's going to work any different. Linda says, fun fact, journaling is not a word, hence why the dictionary doesn't have it and it's always red lines. Well, that's shocking. And I'm surprised for such a commonly used word that they are being, they feel that way about it. Like it's legit. There's like a whole bunch of people who use that word. I'm offended on behalf of the word journaling. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm just really loving my page right now. This is this is really cool. But I need more texture. More texture. So let's see here. What Sorry, else? Sorry, all I got is a cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I can't help you. You see what I you see what I live with? I live with Chuckles over here. Mr. <laughs> <Mr>. <laughs> laugh it up, Chuckles. La laugh it up, Chuckles. That's what I tell him. That's why I tell him when he's being his little sassy self. He comes across as so mild-mannered on this show. Just but really. <laughs> but really, Mr. Crafty is a comedian. I call him Mr. Crafty because he has a stage name we don't want getting out. So it's his real name. <sighs> okay. 
I got lots of washi and all right where where am I what am I doing I think I've kind of lost what I'm doing here what am I searching for I'm looking for some stamps like oh oh here here's some stamps and here maybe I'm looking for some letters like maybe I want some Mr. Sassy. Mr. Sassy. Um. Uh, Karen's asking if I have any distress oxides and stencils. You know, I actually do, Miss Karen. They are in a big bin under my bed. I actually have sprays. I have those little stampy, stampy ones, the bottles with the stamp liquid in it. I have all that stuff and I never pull it out and use it, which is yet another reason why we need to have a craft camp, ladies. We are going to challenge ourselves to get really crafty this summer. Um, and you see, that's kind of the, the thing that actually... I really wanted to learn how to do is more like mixed media. That's the stuff that really attracts me, but I never take the time to learn how to do any of it. So that's going to be something I work on. There's my little glittery. I don't know how this, these thickers are going to work on my page. Cause usually I don't like to put things that have dimension on a flat surface. So we'll see how that works out. But that's kind of fun that they're all glittery. And here's another stamp from Feed Your Craft that I'm going to use to add some more texture. Maybe I have um, some other... Let me see. Oh! I actually do have... I have that, Distress Ink, if that's the same thing. I have Collage Medium. I like all this fun stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun using things. Okay, so one of my favorite colors of my little Prima Chalk edgers, see how it doesn't um, focus, is the Old Road. Yeah, it's not. I'm not sure why. This stamp set's fun. It's got little scribbles, which I could probably draw myself. But... It's more... I think it's more fun using a stamp that you bought personally. Because if I try to do it, I'll probably think, oh, that looks terrible. And Barbara says, your lady is so beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to just kind of randomly place. Melissa Schultz says the dictionary is overrated. <laughs> you do you, I'll do me. What was the word for the um, year? Uh, I missed that. They're, they usually announce like what the most looked up word or was the most popular word. There's like something that the dictionary companies do for 20. Like I think it's the year behind that they'll say this was the word of the year. Did anybody catch what the word of the year was for 2018? I feel like I, I did see it at one point, but I cannot remember what it was. And I, I remember thinking I was surprised that that was the word because I was like, Really? How is that a word a lot of people look up? So if anyone knows what that is. Okay, I'm just putting down some random stars. The stars at night. Holly things. says you should try watercolors. You are correct. And I have some of those too. You guys will finally get to see all of my art supplies when we have our crafty camp because I'll be pulling them all out to learn how to do stuff with them so I can show you stuff I've learned. Diane Godwin says toxic. I wonder if that's the most used word. That was the word toxic? This says new messages too. Um, yes, Karen, I actually have a bottle of the Nouveau Crystal Drops that you just recommended. I do have one little bottle. Hmm. What, Mark? What did you say? This one's doing the new messages at the bottom, too. Why? Yeah. 
I, I wish there would be an option that would just be like, you know what? Ugh. Just how about this? You show me the new messages. <laughs> Don't just tell me that right? they're there. You show me. It's like the mailman showing up to your door. Hey, <laughs> you got some mail out there at the mailbox. You know that? <laughs> really? Why didn't you just bring it to me? <laughs> All right. We're having our own private conversation right now here, honey. Um, he's, we're talking about the little, um, the, the little lap, the tablet we're using at the very bottom. It, All these apps that we use see? for the chat room, there's this thing that you have to click for, for looking at to, the new to, messages. To make the messages, you know, so I can get, scroll down to the bottom and see what you guys are actually Instead saying. Instead of it just showing It just keeps you. telling me, look, there's new messages down here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Melissa, you officially Googled and the word was toxic. Wow. Interesting. Okay, Diane looked it up too. Okay, so we have clarification. We have uh, confirmation. The word was toxic. Okay, so let's, for fun, so I can be, you know, for realsies done with this. Let's say I add some writing. I've been practicing with my writing lately to, like, write more neater because I started really paying attention to the bullet journaler um, layouts and I was really struck by some of the writing is so neat. And one of the girls said that she practiced, has practiced for years with her handwriting. And I thought, you know, I have gotten really lazy and sloppy with my writing. I should really try and like try and see what happens. And when I try, I actually have decent handwriting printing, I should say. So these little stamps are sad. They are just really ridiculous. I don't know if I'll be using these. They're too difficult. I would not say this is my best printing, but oh, the other thing I love to do is I love to make the little plus signs, like little groups of three. That's super fun. It's like my little signature thing. Make sure that everything I make has the little plus signs. In fact, I think they even got printed like that was actually part of the paper because I wanted to make sure. Sorry, my camera does not focus. Yeah, but, it's not focusing. But just trust me. There's three little plus signs there. We incorporated it into the design of the page so that you guys could enjoy them too because they're just so cute and fun. So I believe with this option, it will always show you the latest one, but you can't scroll through them. Uh, Miss Dion, uh, hello. I see your little face in the group. I assume that you just joined us. And I am scrolling, scrolling, scrolling because I've missed a whole bunch of stuff that you guys just said. Okay. So Miriam Webster's word for the year was justice. Interesting. Do you see like the little theme going on there? Toxic and justice. <laughs> Those don't sound like happy words to me. Okay. Hello, my hello, fellow. Hello, Victoria. How are you doing? <laughs> Except that unless someone's signing for oh. you. 
Okay. That'd be weird to be like, Vic. <laughs> Tori. Uh, Victoria. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the worst finger spelling. It's bad. <laughs> when I wake up each day, I'm to walk. What is the one thing I can do? Karen said you should post this to Instagram when you're done. Is that how it works? Are you allowed to post something else onto Instagram? I thought you had to start on Instagram. Oh, which reminds me. That's probably I think, another thing. I think thing. she means to take a picture of it. Oh, duh. <laughs> I completely <laughs> misinterpreted what you meant. I thought you meant when we were done with the video. Um, okay, that's a good point. I could do that. Someone wants deets on your... Uh... Big Bird sweater. My Big Bird sweater came, okay, so it came from a little boutique here in, uh, actually not here in Tennessee. It came, I got it in a little boutique in Kentucky, but I have not removed the tag. <laughs> okay, so this is the tag that was on it. I'm uh, Another embarrassing thing that I do is I often leave tags on things. <laughs> I do not, it's a long-standing habit. It takes me a while to get them off. So that's the name of the company that made the sweater. And then the name of the company. Sorry. It, it doesn't matter okay. where you hold it. It's going to stay the same. Dixieland Boutique is where it came from. Dixieland Boutique is where I got my Big Bird sweater. I have never seen a sweater like this in this color ever. I, I it was love at first sight because I love me some mustard. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. He's helping me get my sweater back on. Okay. Diane says, who are you, Mini Pearl? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's actually kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a fun, embarrassing reason i think i still do it okay so I, faithful planner girl says you can go live on instagram but they limit you to an hour uh oh i would be in trouble i would get kicked <laughs> you off wouldn't, you wouldn't be I done wouldn't, talking i wouldn't make it <laughs> inspire help the most i am vanessa wants deets on your t-shirt uh it is from mod cloth and let me write that out t-shirt Oh, can't see it because our camera is not focusing. Yeah, yeah, you can read that. It's just not extremely legible. Modcloth.com. One of the things I love about Modcloth is that they have really cute plus size clothing. I'm trying, I want to get this complete so I can actually have like a complete page it is my highest. <laughs> Angela Lamel says, thank you for keeping tags on. I feel normal now. <laughs> Megan has the same sweater in the same color. <gasps> Megan, we're twinsies. How'd you get, where'd you get your sweater? This is a Stadler, yes. Yeah, how are Irene says, um, uh, what's your go-to pen for journaling at the moment? Uh, it is, oh, journaling, it's Professor Chicky. I always reach for one of my Professor Chicky pens. It's the needle tip pen. They have like that really sharp little, it's like a gel ink in a needle tip pen. So honestly, like, this is what, what I've been gravitating towards for writing. I just love them so much. However, I will say that like using a bullet journal, this kind of ink has been smearing in them. And so I've been using the Micron for like trying to write in my bullet journal. This I think is Mr. Crafty's, and I think you just left this up here because I, I have I been. have not been using this pen. Kristen wants the deets on your jammy pants. Um, those came from Kohl's. 
last year from Kohl's. Okay, so when I say complete page, I mean like the journaling is in place, everything is done. Before when I was making my pages, I didn't add my journaling, which I wanted to, so it was like official <laughs> um, art journaling. So now I'm just gonna add like the sweet little details, which is like adding things like my stickers, doing, These are my, like, the fun things to me is I have, these came from, sorry, you can't see this. This is really annoying that it won't focus. Um, I got these fun little stickers. They're like little reinforcement donuts. Oh, Victoria said there's uh, live closed captioning on YouTube that she's watching. Oh, cool. We didn't even know that. She Victor said we're winning her heart, so I guess Aww. she was hearing what we said or reading what we said. Okay, so I have these fun little donuts that are really cool because they have they're like stickers. She said your page is lovely, and then she said word strips. So I don't know if she means so, the word yeah, strips are lovely or. I agree. I sometimes can't think of that either, like what I would normally write. So I didn't write something. I just wrote something pretty simple. But I just I wanted to have my journaling in place just once, so I could look at this and go, look, it's a complete, it's completely done. Barbara says she loves to see where you do your journaling and how you build your pages. Love, love, love. Diane said those donuts are so fun. They are fun. They're like, they're just wacky. They have no perp like, they have no rhyme or reason. Just, just because we can't have them for real. So. <laughs> Sloane Elmore said, so excited. I made the live. Hi, Sloane. I'm so glad you're here. Barbara says she loves how we're working together. She said, I'm finally pulling my weight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she didn't. I just made that up. Sorry I did that at your expense, Barbara. <laughs> I just love to hear my wife laugh, so I say funny. <laughs> I say stuff that I think is funny. And she thinks so too. So, yeah, that's all that matters. You're pretty. You have your moments where you're. I have my moments. <laughs> I can say anything, and it makes you laugh. You're you're the you're the most awesomest wife ever at that. <laughs> I honestly think I should just quit all this and become a comedian. <laughs> we could be millionaires. We could, we could not have to do any of this. You can just do you all the time, boo. <laughs> This isn't my show. <laughs> what are you I'm coming in here horning in on your business. You really are. Just making yourself comfortable over there on my bed. See, Celia says I'm cracking her up. <laughs> I'm doing a great job reading the comments with proper inflection. This is you are you are reading them, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm like making my little little donuts here. Go down the page. This is really cool how they have like this little split in the back. Noel says we're like Regis and Kelly. Holly wants you to do a flip through when your pages are full. I will. See, that's what I'm looking for is that magic day when I have like a full fluffy book. So that's why I have to get, I have to get going. I have, I'm getting behind on...
Okay, so now I want to... Ooh. Everybody's rolling on the floor laughing. I have a, I have an Instagram story. I just got a notification that the Instagram story is... <laughs> is Instagramming? Yeah. Or is it story? Did you, did you post something on, on our Instagram? Know, I post all sorts of stuff. Oh, Lord. We're, we're streaming to places that nobody's even watching. <laughs> I, think, I think we're in Russia, too. <laughs> Oh no, Mark. You are too funny. Diane says I'm a hilarious addition. You you have See, it's just you you thought it was bad enough when just you laughed at me. But now it's like it's gonna reach a whole new level. Indeed. With, You're gonna with, be encouraged. With it's all gonna of your be peeps encouraging it, me. Indeed. Letting me know I, how funny I am. Oh gosh. Right? There is there is so many raffles on here. Why don't you count them up, honey? Count up the Why don't you document it in your little journal? Yes, we can document. Dear them. diary, t tonight I was tonight I, I, I reached was... four hundred and ninety nine <laughs> raffles. I had them rolling. I was really in my element. Ooh. Rachel says your laugh is contagious, and that is that is one of the biggest reasons I enjoy making you laugh. Because it's, it's contagious. Just, it's, yes. You don't laugh at yourself, so how is it contagious? You're not being contagious, or you're, you're not contagious. I'm not contagion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a very sweet thing to say. Sing Sing says, scrap the music, give Mr. Crafty the background. Stitch. I know, right? When you are crafting. We've been doing this all wrong. They're in stitches. Stitches, huh? Stitches. Okay. I'm just I'm just grabbing random stuff now. Like, let's see here. Just random things. Melissa loves it that you call it fluffy. It's going to be amazing and fluffy. I, Christine White says, hello, sugar hugs from Napa. <gasps> Napa. Land of grapes and wine and expensive real estate. I am now officially covering over that cute little, little plus signs. I feel like I'm getting it real layery. It's the layers are building. Kristen says, Mr. Crafty is on fire. And in parentheses, at least the craft space isn't. Hallelujah. No fire tonight. Put a birdie on my little one. I feel like it's a little blankish up here. Vanessa says she's out for the night. Good night, Vanessa. <laughs> Melissa agrees that she loves you laugh. Thank you very much. I'm gonna put in a pencil on here. <laughs> Angela Mel says, Mark, please do a mystery science theater version of LNC. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever watch Mystery Science Theater 3000? That has gotta be one of the funniest shows ever. I don't, I don't know that everyone gets it or appreciates it, but it is a hilarious show. Oh, my Lanta. Why'd you say, oh, my Lanta? You give that page smallpox. I did. <laughs> Just like donuts everywhere. I donated it up, man. Donut Palooza. It <laughs> 
it's been donated. There's no room for, darn it, one of my sticky notes. Okay, what else, what else do I got in here? What can I throw on this thing? Melissa Schultz wants to know what the pencil stickers are from. Uh, these are from us. This is a TRG. We Maybe had, I will do a... We had different ones. Aren't they adorable? A sticker sheet of those. I, I have a thing for them. <laughs> Like, I have a thing for them. They're one of my favorite stickers we've ever made. So. Let's do a cut file of those. Note to self, Mr. Speaker. Indeed. Okay, so have I done everything I want to do with this? Erica says she loves Mystery Science 3000. Erica Sheehan. Erica Miller. Erica Miller. No, Susan, those are not in our print shop, although I may put them in there. Good night, Aunt Sue. Thank you for uh, joining us. Get good sleep. You're in South Africa. I'm sure you, you're up at some crazy time right now to join us. Thank you. Okay, so let me see here. Yes, Celia, I have plans on doing uh, cut files of the sampler sheets. That's on my to-do list. And we're also going to do the arrow stickers uh, and whimsy arrows that Corey loves so much. These guys. This Kathleen, the ah, new, the this new is, cricket. This is, a, this is the sticker book that I... I got Mr. Crafty to <laughs> make me look like how many of these stickers I have in here because I'm obsessed. These are my favorite sticker ever and I love, love, love using them for journaling and my planning and stuff. So I asked him to make me a whole bunch of them so I would not run out. These ones are clear. So I have them from different collections. And then he made me some that I could use for like bullet journaling. So here's one of the cut files that he made that has the little pencils. This is uh, the Graceful um, collection. So it's got the cute little, sim like the little shapes, little planners, more little shapes. Here's a little planner reminders, ampersands. These are the regular quarter sheets that I had in my own stash. And then here is some from the Anu collection, which is my second favorite. Here's Reset. This is the one that just came out. I have a bunch of them, obviously. Here's these. Here's more of that. Oh, there's a lot of Reset stuff. He was kind of practicing, so I was letting him like, practice with... They're so fun to stick on your journaling. Megan says you got her hooked on the Tombow marker pens. <gasps> They're magical. She wants all the colors. Um, I went to Michael's the other day and these were actually sold in, as open stock. So you could just buy like one or two pens if you wanted to. Now, I don't know if all the Michaels sell them that way, but I... I saw them and I was like, holy cow. Because if you just wanted to make your own set of Tombow markers for, for um, highlighting, you would be set. You don't have to buy the whole, like a whole collection if you don't want to. I bought like this set I bought on Amazon. This is the pastel collection. But I made my own set of, um, 
of these, like the colors I wanted to use. So I, I like made my own little set up and I noticed when I went to a Michael's and I think that was a Michael's here in Tennessee, they had, um, they had them open stock. So you could just buy one pen at a time if you wanted to. Okay. I'm calling this done and it probably took me like the entire show. What time is it right now? I have no idea. 1041. So yes, I have officially spent almost two hours <laughs> on this one page, <laughs> but, but it looks awesome. But it looks awesome. Indeed. And I had a lot of fun. So I'm going to stick that in there. You're welcome, Melissa. And the new uh, set that's coming out, Treasured, uh, will also have cut files for that also. Okay, so I have one page done in there. And let me see if I can catch myself up here on my bingo. So some this was the kind of the test sheet, and this one is a little light. So let's see. Posted in club, self-cared, planning sesh. Oh, I actually had a planning sesh this week. Nice. I journaled. Yes. Uh, I did put down stickers. Yes. I did not finish coloring in one of my honeys. Did I punch? No. Paint layers. I did layers. Yes. Barbara says Tombow has a new batch coming out this year. Awesome. They are the most magical markers. I love them so much. And I attended a late night crafty club, yo. Hello. And documented. <laughs> Stamp. Oh, I stamped. I stamped. See, look at this, you guys. Have you guys been keeping up with your bingo? Look how many I just knocked out. Good night, Anne. Good night. And technically, I shared one of my spreads because I just... Came in here, posted in club, self cared. Uh, yeah, I did. Punched paint, posted in club. Okay, so look how many I just did in here. Nice. Okay. Oh, and I documented because I filled in some of my lists tonight. So, hi. Do I have a bingo? I still, I just colored all that in and I still don't have a bingo. So I need to smash and then I'll have one right there. So I have to finish her so I can color in one of my honeys. I did document. <gasps> I punched here. Did I, did I sign off on that? Did I, is there more than one punched? Here's a punched. Linda, your cut file should line up. I put a lot of work into making sure that everything lines up. So if it's not, okay. make sure that you're following all the steps. I didn't take care of this, but I did officially punch because I punched this one. You punch me all the time. And I shared a spread, okay, which is that, what, what I did tonight. Okay, so. Oh, wait, that's from la that's from that night. This one is from this night. Okay. All right. So I'm excited. I can't wait to do this page now. <laughs> Michelle Spencer says your biggest fan, Frank, the cat <gasps> Frank is trying to sleep on my lap, but he keeps waking up when you laugh. Oh, he is not impressed right <laughs> now. <laughs> Sorry, Frank. Sorry, man. I understand. A cat's got to sleep. Okay. So there is my, um, my thing for tonight. So I will be doing more prompts. I should probably work on this this weekend so I can kind of, you know, that is a good suggestion. If you guys are kind of trailing behind for January, maybe you could just, this is for winter. So winter ends in March, like mid March. So you have until mid March to get your vision board done. I have seen a few people do their vision board. It is so bomb. I've also seen some people do their winter um, letter, which was impressive. So I need to finish that. I am going to get this done. I am. We still have six days of January. So let's see here. How many? Good night, Liz. Good night.
So I would do these two, these two. Yeah, that's a lot for January. I might not be able to do all of that for January, but I will try to do the rest so I can have completion. Completion. That's what's important. All right, ladies. We are all getting sleepy in the club. It's time for all of us to get some beauty sleep. Um, Susan is asking about what smash means. So smash is just like a term um, uh, that has to do with like uh, smashing something in your book. Like um, here. Okay. So let's say uh, I go do an event. I have like, this great time. I want to go ahead and just um, document it. So I'm going to go ahead and add um, here. Oop. I'm going to add like here's the receipt from me going. And I'm looking for a piece of washi to, to do this. So it's like I'm going to just put things in my book. There's um, a company called KNC Company. They make a product called the Smash Folio, and it's like a whole scrapbook of just things for you just to tape down, glue down. You can punch it and stick it in here. Um, and that's what's called smashing. You're just smashing it in, basically. So I'm, I'm just adding extra pieces to my page, and um, I'm looking around my desk for... <laughs> Things, things I could um, throw No, off. Barbara, no appearances while we're here in Nashville. We're leaving in a few days. Okay, so like here's a, um, this is a, let's just say it's a, a photo or, or a, a magazine article about this place I went to. I could punch it and stick it in here with my book or I could tip it in or I could um, fold it up. And like um, stick it in an envelope that's attached to the page. So I, that's like just getting the hint. There's all kinds of ways to attach things. But a smash book is a generic term for just kind of smushing stuff into your book. Which is one of my favorite things to do is just add extra goodies. It doesn't even have to be like... Um, I'm trying to find my... I'm looking for my, where's my uh, handbook? From camp. I'm looking for my camp reset handbook. What did I do with it? Hello. <clears throat> I think it's right here. So here's another example of like smashing something in. It's like an extra book page and I punched it and I smashed it in here. I think it's kind of a cute name personally so I did not complete my crafty um oh that's cute I'm sorry I didn't even fill that out so I didn't complete my camp reset stuff <laughs> but I will this year okay so we have been crafty a whole lot of crafty we did a whole lot of talking we're all happy on the same page as far as um my announcement about camp, which I very much appreciate all your support and encouragement. So I am going to type up my response to the situation, get it onto my website. I'll probably try and do that sometime tomorrow. So um, I hope that you guys are really excited, stoked about um, our summer camp coming where we are going to just be oozing craftiness, oozing <laughs> Um, and yes, the disc bound, uh, um, the disc bound format for these playbooks, the handbook, the workbook, all the books that I'm going to be doing. This is why I really recommend this is because then you can keep adding stuff and it's so flexible. Like you can pull this out and move it to a different place in your book. It just, there's so much flexibility. And I, um, I added some like note paper to the back of my, uh, crafty book so it was a little thicker and with the sticker book you can take those sticker sheets and plop them right in there indeed too. so when you have the little sticker like the little say i wanted to pull this out and i want to make sure i have some stickers in here to to play with i would just go ahead and add those into my book they'd be right there see so now i have some stickers to grab and um and then i would have this so anywho 
So thank you guys so much for spending this time with me. It is like 11 o'clock. We've been in on her for about three hours. I used to try and make this a two hour show, but I feel like the, every time I've done it, like the last four times, it's, it's been a three hour show and even longer sometimes. Cause, yeah. but I, I love your little faces. I'm so glad that I was able to spend time with you. And so many of you guys showed up. I'm so happy that we're going to be doing our, our craftiness in the summertime. And yes. Oh, thanks for reminding me. It is happy Australia day to our girls down under. So if you guys are going to catch me on the replay, happy Australia day. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it pretty much sounds like maybe it's your, like a founding day, a day you celebrate being, you know awesome <laughs> with your awesome, awesome with your awesome accents that you have that we're all jealous of all up the here shrimp that are on the barbie indeed all of the terrible cliches that us americans have from watching too many hollywood <laughs> movies about australia um but anyway i love your little faces and i'm i'm so grateful that we were able to spend time together tonight so I will be seeing you soon. I'll be posting on our events calendar when the next a late night crafty club will be, which will be February. We are just right around the corner. You guys, please show up for our launch in two days. Look for the newsletter that we send out every 27th. We send out a newsletter with all the links for everything going on. It makes it very easy for you guys to know what's happening. That's the reset girl insider newsletter that will be coming out in two days and you guys will get to experience the new treasured um, collection. So I love your little faces. Thank you guys so much. Love you guys. And I will see you soon. Happy Aussie Day, everyone. All my little Aussie girls.